you have 56 mods on at the same time. Yeah. You got to get up to 100. You got to do you got to do the thing where you get like yeah. 100 mods and then you just record it in your OBS. Post it online, you'll get so many hits. It's like a guarantee. People love that. People love to see depends people. Depends on the mods. Yeah. It really depends on the mods. There's there's a lot of them for Fallout 4 that are just like, let's make sluts. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. There's there's a lot of <laughs> mods yeah. for Fallout 4 that are like that. I I was playing Skyrim not too long ago, and they have tons of mods that are basically the, also that for. <laughs> For that particular game, you can you can do a whole overhauls if you really want. There were a couple that I never really got around to playing yet um, that were apparently like award-winning whole quest lines that somebody came up with that were fully voice acted and everything. And I was like, oh, that's neat. You For know. Skyrim, yeah, yeah. There's, there's um, a whole ton of that, uh, which is really cool. Oh yeah, yeah, and I'm not even talking about the Beyond Skyrim stuff that they were doing, but like, um, no, but more, more, you know, insular pieces that you could go and and do as whole quest lines. So that was neat, but I haven't really gotten around to playing much of that. I did try that. Uh, what was it? Moon Path to Elsewhere. I I started playing yeah, that. Elsewhere. Yeah. Which is, yeah. It it's. Only. Yeah, it's for Khajiit. Khajiit live in elsewhere. But there's a quest Khajiit line. What was that? Khajiit have many wares. <laughs> yes, Khajiit have many wares. Khajiit are innocent of these crimes. They are. Just believe me, they are, folks. Uh, anyway, you know what's, you know what's interesting, actually, Alex, is that we're, well, uh, I'm going to tell you, um, (laughs) you're you're talking about Fallout 4, and do you know what season Fallout 4 is set in? What season it's set in? Yeah. Yeah, It's, oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah. I see what you're doing there. Yeah. (laughs) That was lame. <laughs> Fallout 4 is set around Halloween. At the beginning of the game. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, at the beginning of the game, which is the reason why all the decor in the capital wa- uh, Commonwealth, in the Commonwealth, I'm thinking Fallout 3 for a second, in the Commonwealth is all the pumpkins, and you have the little plastic pumpkins that you come across, and... Uh, the gr- the stuff that's yeah. on the walls and everything are Halloween themed and and that's funny because uh this is is the Halloween season. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. No, no we we that's... no. If you sing any more, we're gonna get a uh, copyright strike. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna claim it. This they we're on Twitch. We're not. On... This this is true. We're on Twitch. You could do anything. It'll be on YouTube later. It will be on YouTube later, and then they can, they can get me for that. Oh my goodness! I had a couple of things that I had just posted not too recently, and they did give me a copyright claim on them because of music that was just in the game. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened with Diehack GU. Um, when you're playing games and posting them onto, uh, YouTube, mm. uh, basically just. Turn- Turn the game music off. Because it won't get you for gameplay. They'll get you for music. Yeah. The the weird thing is, though, that the music that they have, it's not like famous music. It's just no, it's but, just like yeah. cinematic score stuff that they that they must have outsourced from somebody else. So uh, the problem is, is that like with the the train sim video I did. The whole start of the video kind of revolves around the fact that it is absolutely ridiculous that they have this epic sweeping score while showing you this action-packed footage of trains going down a track. (laughs) Which I just thought was hilarious to watch. It really is. It's like, look at the amazing action. Did you see this? It's incredible. 
It's a train, like, driving at a normal speed down a track. Wow. That damn train. Damn train. And <laughs> yeah. If uh, if anyone is out there listening to this, uh, if you get a chance and you, you see the most recent video I did last week, it was, um, I did an attempting to play, it was about um, Train Sim 2020, and m the majority of what I did in that game was walking. Yeah, I saw you posted about it, I didn't actually watch the video. You, you've you never explained what the whole Titanium Mine thing is, by the way. Have I not explained any official? That? Oh, that's too bad. Oh, well. Anyway, th <laughs> thanks. That's <laughs> no. great. Okay. Citanium Mine is more or less me talking about specific video games. Um, uh, ba based on my experience of, of having played them and what worked, what didn't work, and also some alternatives to them if you didn't necessarily like, uh, what that particular game was. Uh, so a little bit more about the actual mechanics, the design, and... Issues, or is it me? Uh, it might be you, because I am hearing you drop out once in a while. Don't know why. I don't know. Let me do things really quick. Um, because my connection looks pretty good, actually. I'm well, kind of new internet, so it should be. Fun. Ah, the new internet. Well, one thing that I am checking on uh, though is my memory's a little bit taxed, so I'm gonna try to see if I can't smooth that out a little bit. Um, what are you smoothing out? I'm smoothing out, uh, seeing if I can uh, get my memory usage down a little bit. Because it's a, a little high at the moment. But darn you, Chrome, and your insistence yeah, on... Mine, mine should not be. Yeah. You You have that new internet... That fresh, new, well, smelling no, internet. No, it's not even that, Nathan. It's I have a good computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my memory is... is uh, at 86%. Yeah, you should, you should get that knocked down a bit. I would love to. It says it is currently uh, optimizing. Yeah. So that's good. Also, my CPU usage is apparently 90%, and I have absolutely no idea why. Yeah, you should get that down. Nathan, I'm assuming it's on your end, because my CPU is at 13% while I'm running Fallout 4 with the 54 mods that I've got on it. My memory usage is only 25%. My network usage is like zero. It's like zero. I, uh, oh, I, I, oh, oh, I got up to 30%. Whoa. Whoa, what the heck did you do? <laughs> oh, it's because I'm loading the game because I <laughs> went to close Steam and it's like, hey, we're going to close Fallout 4. I'm like, what? No, don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't go and do that. Um, Why are you trying to close the game that I'm playing? Oh, Jeez, I, computer. I I think I know what's probably. I bet I know the you, tab. You that's... I know the thing that's being. It it's trying to download a bunch of stuff right now. Why is it trying to download stuff, Nathan? That's why we can't have nice games. Or it, nice nice talks. <laughs> it is. It should be done in a second anyway, but um. Hopefully it's uh it's gonna be okay. Th because honestly, um, you know, call interference is one of the spooktacularest things of the season. See what I did there? That no. yep. I I explained why spooky things are spooky because of the internet. The internet is the spookiest right. of things. Um yeah, totally. 
anyway, yeah, in answer to your question, Citanium Mine is actually me specifically talking about video games, and it's usually about specific video games on each episode in a smaller you know, I, podcast. I get that. Yes. Oh, okay. You mean solo like monogam? Yeah, yeah, in in a, in a small uh yeah, by myself and also with shorter episodes than what we normally do on everything else. They're only about um 10 to 20 minutes long. So, uh I did do I I will have one a little bit later this month though that is about some spooky games that I played only to realize later that I, I forgot ones that were actually, like, specifically sp- supposed to be spooky games. Uh, spooky, scary, sometimes game. Yeah, I I forgot to mention that I had played, like, Call of Cthulhu and um, Friday the 13th. Although, that might just be because they weren't all that memorable anyway. <laughs> so... Sorry. The thing I realized, though, going back and looking at it, is that most scary games that I've played were scary not because the game was, like, scary, you know, but usually because of, like, weird camera angles or the fact that I actually had to play it. Uh, Alan Wake uh, mm. k- kind of supposed to be a scary game. Um, I was scared because... I didn't understand why I had to do flashlight aiming and gun aiming at the same time. Oh, yeah, you got to use those dual analog sticks, right? It's it's like that, but then also they have this thing where it's like not only do you have the gun and you have to manage your, you know, bullets and your ammunition and everything, but the flashlight has a battery, and the battery goes down if you keep it on long enough. And it, you might have to replace the battery in the middle of combat because the only way you can destroy the shadow monsters are to shine the light on them first and then shoot them. And I'm like, why? Why is this the gameplay? <laughs> this this is not compelling gameplay <laughs> to me. Sure uh, it is. Well, and it's, you know, Quantic... Quantic Dreams has done some good work. Um, what, Quantum Break? I played some Quantum Break. I, I haven't played Control, but I heard good things. I, I will play it at some point. But Alan Wake is... Uh, like, the first episode in Alan Wake, like, the the very start of it, the, it's like, oh, yeah, that's the character from that book I wrote that's chasing me now. And all of a sudden, you're like, so basically, this entire game is going to be you... Um, in your own nightmare of characters that you yourself created, so why do I care? <laughs> like, I already know where this is going. I don't know why I have to suffer through this game. Um, there were there was there was stuff like that. Like, Dark Souls is technically like kind of a, a horror gothic horror kind of themed game, but the but the actual Souls like part of it is what actually scared me more than anything else. <laughs> is the the playing it part that um so how however i probably will be playing an actual scary game soon and then uh, i might do a titanium mine on that but i don't usually like to play them do you play any like horror kind of games scary games uh not really yeah yeah I mean, I'm okay with, like, themes, like, if, if there's something scary in it, but I don't usually play games specifically because they're horror games, you know, I just don't, that, like, the Outlasts and the PTs and the Slenders of the world, I, I don't, I don't want to play them, I have no interest in playing them. You, you, go, you can go play Subnautica. I have played Subnautica, I own Subnautica. Isn't, isn't that your horror game of choice? Gee, you know what's interesting? I don't think I have ever actually mentioned <laughs> that. I didn't even mention it in that episode. Ah, damn it. Damn it. It's, um, oh, because I hate underwater combat. 
Yeah. 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 yeah you, and you hate sharks. Yeah, but you know, there really aren't sharks in Subnautica. There's there's like alien creatures. Some of them they're are called sharks, but they're they don't they don't really look like sharks. Although the weird thing is, is that like with all the alien creatures in that, if there was literally like something that looked like an actual shark, I would have turned the game off immediately. <laughs> but but the alien like you know leviathans and stuff that are in it's like all right, that's fine. I don't care. Subnautica is a good game. Subnautica's I actually played it. You haven't played it? I would actually recommend it. And the thing about it is is that there's like there is base building and stuff involved in it too. Uh so you get to kind of build your underwater base, you get to build little, like your subs and stuff eventually. Um but the environments are all like built. It's it's not really generated like a lot of games are. They they really Did built this. And then Are you I died. Still talking? You were still talking. Okay. I was still talking. You you cut out from it. Oh, okay. Um. Anyway, base building some of that, but they actually like constructed the game. It's not um like randomly generated like some large games are. It's very pretty. The underwater environments are very nice to look at. Um. And I guess they've put in a lot of new content since the last time I've I've played, actually, uh, with with more for the storyline and some actual like ship based uh, gameplay islands you can visit and stuff. So yeah, but it's but it's neat and it is actually um, like if when you're diving down and you have to worry about your oxygen meter and stuff, there there's definite te- there's definite tension that they they put into the game it's it's good i probably should just do an episode where i talk about subnautica but um but no actually even though i hate underwater combat and i don't like getting into the water and subnautica is like completely underwater uh i i would actually recommend subnautica i thought it was a very well done game they did a very good job with it um now in far cry 3 I ain't getting into that water, cause bull sharks are in there. So, but Subnautica, you're fine. You're fine. There's tons of things that want to eat you, but they don't look like sharks. So, we're good. Yeah. Let me. I'm gonna have to fix some. Uh oh, he's fixing something, folks. Yep. Um. Dun, 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 fixing something. Da, 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 da. Oh man, speaking of horror games that I need to make you play. What was that one that I was <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, no no no, it's it's okay. Um there's a game, it's on iOS, but I think you can also play it on Windows. And it's um uh Genshin Impact. I I just you I'm sure you'd love it. It's I watched a thing from Layman Gaming where it, they called it Breath of the Waifu. <laughs> and it, it's it's very Breath of the Wild inspired. Hello. Oh. Is is Nathan cutting out for you too or is it just me that's having issue hearing him? Uh, for the stream itself, which I've been listening to for the past uh, 15 minutes, it's set the stream itself is sometimes cutting in and out a little bit, but otherwise it's been uh, audio pretty decent. So it's Nathan then, because he's the one that's streaming it. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, Nathan, it's not just me. It no. It, Sorry, Nathan. No, no, it's 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 totally Alex. I still say it's Alex. It's. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna swear. I mean, I'm gonna blame you. So. I mean, yeah, that's fine. It's pro- apparently when I change the per- uh, permissions on the uh, talking thing, I didn't do it for anyone r- with just the game designer tag. Oh. <laughs> so Oops. that's why you couldn't join, James. Oops. Uh, 
Let's all fix that, though. Glad we fixed that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I figured there was something funky going on, but... Yeah, no, there there was. There was some Funky Kong stuff going on there. <laughs> the, be the best of the Donkey Kong crew. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, enough of me talking. Um, James, how are we doing tonight? I'm hanging in there. It's very cold where I'm at, so I'm very tired. But otherwise, um, it's been pretty good. Are Very you... excited for Spooptober. Oh, yes. Now, you say it's cold there. Is this that facility from The Thing? Are you are you there right now? I can neither confirm nor deny these accusations. Fair enough. Thing? Okay. Um, the, the Thing. You know, that thing. Mm. <laughs> the thing. That thing. The thing you do. That's a different movie, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's a whole different... And very different in thematic uh, qualities. The, the We're thing, doing things now. It, it, the thingy thing. It, the, oh, there was a movie called The Thing, Alex. It was from John. Yeah, that's, that's a different thing. That, that is a different thing. And, but they were at an Arctic research station. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's why, that's why Kurt Russell's in the big parka with the big frilly thing on in the movie. Yeah, is that what that is? I guess so. It's a jacket that has like a fur liney thingy on it. Not like I've ever watched the movie. I really should. Fur, fur liney thing. <laughs> fur so line. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we had a few things that we needed to talk about. But uh, no, it. I mean, it's spooky times. And that means that we have to talk about spooky Thing. We're under literal obligation since it's October to to talk about the spookiest time of the year, which is is Halloween. Which is like, oh, I thought you were gonna say election season. Well, yeah, damn you! <laughs> you took the next joke I was gonna make. Um, <laughs> yes, the spookiest thing of the the year, elections. Also, Halloween, <laughs> which comes up. That's like our pre-election. <laughs> horror uh, movie um so uh yeah i'm more or less thinking about halloween though alex but your point is well taken yeah yeah, yeah. It usually is do you have yeah. uh something that you're dressing up as for halloween uh shit me i have no idea i have the weekend off for halloween because oh, i don't work on the weekend oh so i've got friday saturday and sunday off because i asked for the Ooh. sunday off in case i do anything for halloween which i probably won't yeah yeah because i'm pretty sure i'll have my kid and pretty sure we're not going trick-or-treating yeah <laughs> any um, any uh yeah yeah, yeah. Any costume that you have has to have like a mask on it. It's that pretty much. You, you could do Darth they Vader. Won't. Darth Vader would be a good costume. Could have that. Could have one of those uh, those rubber masks that people put on um, at clubs. I'm not allowed to go into. Um, what else? What else could you do? Um, you could be a surgeon. Why don't you go as a surgeon? Or you could go as a plague doctor. Perfect this year. <gasps> Ooh, I want one of those masks. I want the bird mask. Uh, yeah, the, the, the bird mask. Give me one second. I'll be right back. I need to check on noises from the other room, which I assume are just my son, but... What? <laughs> but check. but you know, it is the time of year for paranormal activity. You never know. Uh, don't you know? Uh, you know what? I have a feeling that he's gonna go in to the room, right? And uh, Casper, the friendly ghost, is gonna be having a conversation with his son, <laughs> and and then he's going to have to say, "Wait, you don't exist." And uh, there's a whole conversation about, "No, you just don't believe in ghosts," but that's not our problem. I find that this time of year is uh both uh, fascinating and also annoying. Because I don't, because again, I feel like I'm under an obligation to play a lot of scary games and to watch a lot of scary movies, and I don't particularly like to. 
So I'm so I'm I'm not particularly happy. I'm fascinated by it, but I'm not particularly happy. James, however, how do you feel about spooky season? Mm, I'm I'm divided, honestly. Mm. I don't like I like I like the ideas and the concepts of uh, uh, horror games and horror movies Mm -hmm. Um, from a psychological study standpoint, Mm -hmm. but I I personally don't care for them. So if I feel a little bit out of, I don't know, I feel a little bit out of place. Everyone's playing all the horror games and watching creepy movies and stuff like that. And I'm just sort of like, no, I think I'll pass. But it is fun. I'm actually very on par with you there, James. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's one of those things that you're obligated to do this time of year, but I don't want to. So, so I don't. Yeah. But, but then you start seeing I... like scary movies come on the television, and you're like, oh, I guess it's that time of year. If I'm gonna watch it, I guess I'll do it now but no i'm very much with james on that like i enjoy the concepts but you know i don't really need like horror itself Um, yeah it's like i don't really do horror but i do like creepy things i like uh uncanny valley type stuff psychology uh psychology of things Mm. well that's um that's actually an interesting thing to discuss a little bit too because Which uh, what no just so, something I was thinking about while you were talking and I wasn't listening what happened <laughs> I was, I, was think, I was thinking about that uh, no no where you're talking about like I like this kind of thing about like the the almost like the paranormal part of it more I than really... more more than the yeah. actual horror part of it right but the whole season kind of wraps up in a lot of different concepts, a, a lot of different ideas that might seem a little disparate. You have the one that's like, oh, I like to get scared. Boo! There's a ghost. But then there's also the paranormal part of like actual like ghosts and the psychological kind of horror and just like the macabre uh, or the the, you know, the underbelly of things, the hidden world sort of stuff, um, that, uh, that all kind of get rolled into one. So, uh, you know, I like the whole idea of ghosts and vampires and such. Um, but, uh, mm-hmm. but I, I, boo. Ah. Uh. Boo. No, that wasn't me Booey, you cut out really bad there for a second. Okay, so yeah, it's not just me, Nathan. Yeah. It's you, your your computer and internet both suck. <laughs> the spookiest part of the season. This yeah. is the spookiest well, this, part this of the season. This is typical. I think I think I have this issue with Nathan often. Yeah. I'm yeah. just like hey, you're cutting out, and he's like, "No, I'm not." <laughs> I know I am, but what are you? I know you are, but what am I? I have not, but I I I will not say any more at this time. Things could change on hey, a dime. Things, things do change on a dime. All the dimes, all the time. Wait, that. Did you intend that to rhyme? I did. Good. Are you, are you proud of true. me? No, I'm never proud of you. Damn, toxic. <laughs> I'm never, I'm never proud of you. That's that's called tough love. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah, no. Thematically, the season works out well for me. Um, from a visceral, uh, you know, emotional reaction, I'm I'm not on board. I don't I don't like that part. So it's um little hard for me to get behind playing stuff that's particularly scary. I'm never going to play Slender, mostly because I just don't want to. Um, oh, that game is so weird. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. However, I... Ender? I oh, play oh. the Enderman. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. basically you are the Enderman in, in Slender. But more hostile, just generally angry. Um, but hey, I, I don't even do Five Nights at Freddy's. It's like, no, I don't want to do Jump Scared. Oh, but even my son plays Five Nights at well, your your son has sterner constitution than me, I guess, because... Oh my talking. gosh, it would be hard to... He played a lot of them, and then he stopped playing them recently because he was having bad dreams, and we're like, alright, you're done playing FNAF for a while, and yeah. you've already played them all. I, I, I would have had bad dreams. I've, I, I hate the... I, I think it's the screaming part that annoyed me more than anything. All of a sudden, the bear comes out... And like okay, I don't need this in my life, man. I, I yeah. Well, see, here's the thing. Like my son, he's ten now. Yeah. Um, and he was a ton of YouTube, and he had seen a ton of people. Like he'd seen people play FNAF a ton, a whole lot. And sure. so, uh, for his birthday back in July, he got some stuff for the Switch, like gift cards to get games. And he's like, I want FNAF. And like his mom was like, like he. I, I said I told her I was like he wants FNAF. She's like oh, I don't know if he's old enough for that. I'm like well he watches a ton of videos and he's ten. He can make informed decisions about things like that and technically it's his money. I'm like he's seen enough of it that he knows what it's all about and he can get the first. I I think he can get the first one and if he likes it that's fine and if he doesn't mm -hmm. he'll know he doesn't like it. Yeah. And she's like that's a good point. So we let him, and he bought, like, all of them. Yeah. Because he wanted to. Because he played the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, whatever. Played yeah. all of them on the Switch that he could. Yeah. Um, And he's, like, beat them all, too. So he really does like them, but, like, I think he just played them too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that he just started having dreams about it, so... That, that kind of happens with almost any game. I remember back when I originally got my, um, uh, what was it? The Game Boy? Back when I had my original Game Boy, the the gray brick Game Boy. <laughs> oh yeah. Tetris. If you oh. if you play Tetris long enough, you dream in Tetris. Yeah. It will start you'll start seeing blocks falling everywhere you go <laughs> if you are not careful. <laughs> you will oh, hear yeah. that theme song everywhere. <laughs> Oh, hey, Nathan, know how I was telling you about one of the mods I have for Fallout 4 here? Yeah. Uh, where it's, if you go into a location, like, you'll get a legendary item. Yeah, yeah. it just got a staggering submachine gun. Nice. Yeah, I'm not going to use it, but I'll keep it. Probably give it to a follower. There's a, a mod that you can actually get for Fallout 4 where you can, um, in modifications, you can actually oh, put yeah, legendary you... mods on him. And choose, yeah, I, I, choose I, don't, I never mods. wanted that one. That that's too that's too cheap for me. Like you haven't even to started to see games, cheat for, for me. No, if I wanted to cheat and play games, I would cheat and play games. I wouldn't just play games. I would just cheat. You just get the cheat <laughs> mod. Yeah, I would just. Well, I mean, room. I've definitely added like materials this playthrough because I'm like, all right, I added a bunch of mods to do these things, and I'm like, I need these materials to do the things, and mm -hmm. I don't want to just wait. So I'm like, let me do this so I can figure out these things and, and get all set. So. Yeah. Also, James, I'm playing Fallout 4 as as we chat. <laughs> I noticed. That looks like, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, Is Fallout 4 any good? Yeah. I, I've played a lot of it. I don't um, know if it's the best Fallout, but it's... A, a, for what it is it's good uh yeah. i would say it is uh similar to skyrim in the fact that it is way better when you add a ton of mods it can be the add-ons though were good if you ever got to play well, dlcs yeah. i have i have some of them i don't yeah. have all of them i don't know that i've ever played skyrim modded i'm not sure that you can do that on my, um my uh console which is a switch so like I think that's not allowed, but mm, I don't know. I don't have a switch, so yeah. is it special I know on everything edition? else? There's there's stuff. Because I thought in special edition, maybe it's not so. on the switch. But they're they're like I I have special edition for the Xbox, and there is a whole thing for mods, and you can go on and and download and play them. I you might be a limited little bit more limited than like he is on the computer. Oh yeah, I I think there's like over twenty thousand mods in the computer you can get. 
Well, that, and also how many you can run at a time, because there's so much space denoted for the number of yeah. mods that you can have. I mean, I can, as long as I can fit them on my computer, I can run as many as I want. Yeah. I have 54 mods running on Skyrim right now. <clears throat> you mean on Fallout Mod 4. Uh, thank you. I have like 34 in Skyrim. Yeah. Um, but I was telling Nathan, it's like most of mine are just visual stuff and just like gameplay tweaks and performance enhancements. Yeah. Um, so like there's one for weather, there's some for making all the textures less, uh, intrusive. Yeah. I think the issue with them before is that they're all giant files. And so there's a ton of mods that will break them down to be smaller. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really nice. Cause it's like, yeah, we're going to take these giant images and just kind of make them a lot easier for your computer to process <laughs> that's cool there's um, um do you have the one that's like the 4k sky yeah mod? i've got actually i felt i've got one called like vivid weathers uh yeah um so like all of the everything looks really nice and the water textures there's one for the water yep. clear water one of those two the one for the night sky yeah. is really nice yeah Where i have that see the one stars. of those on um skyrim as well yeah because it looks pretty <laughs> it, it's very it's very good looking yeah helps yeah, to improve i like the all game. the all the visual mods i like all the um stuff like that so when i do it i was like yeah i'm getting all the all the visual mods i can yeah to make this game look amazing to give it like, 16 times the graphic power <laughs> yeah i think there's 8k mods you can get i just don't i don't think i'm sure necessary i'm sure <laughs> I think I have all the 4K ones, though. 16 times the graphics. Um, yeah, no, I like Fallout 4 a lot. Um, obviously, New Vegas is my favorite of the Fallout franchise. But um, Fallout 4 might be my second. Might be my second favorite. Um, and then 3. And then... Um, Basically, any other Fallout game I hadn't played, and then 76. That's pretty much the breakdown. Um, and Wasteland. Wasteland is a better Fallout game than, <laughs> than Fallout 76, for the record. Fallout I mean, 3 really was no. very good, just for the record. Fallout 3 is very good. Uh, Wasteland 3 is very good. They do need to do something about the load screens. And, and 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 the freezes. But once they fix that, it's gonna be very, very good. <laughs> once they get rid of those glaring issues. They've already been working on it. I, I know that they've all uh in exile's already been working on it, but but like what I mean, Alex, is that the part where you're just playing the game is so good. The actual game part of the game is so well done. <laughs> Very impressive stuff. Um, but yeah, no, Fallout 4 was good, James. If you get a chance to play it, I would def definitely suggest. It is a recommendation for me. I've put over 100 hours into it, so I must have liked it to some degree. <laughs> um, but yeah. Not the best Fallout game, though. Again, New Vegas. New Vegas. New Vegas, best Fallout game. There was talk, now that there's the whole Bethesda being bought by Microsoft thing happened, that since they also own Obsidian, and now they have essentially licensed to the Fallout franchise, there's a lot of rumors in the rumor mill about uh, New Vegas 2, that they may, might oh, eventually because do Obsidian that. Also because Obsidian also because owned by... Yeah, Microsoft now owns Obsidian and Bethesda. So they have license to Fallout, and they have the the studio that made New Vegas under their I mean, company. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just be happy if they take it and go, hey, make a new engine for your game. Yeah, the, the first thing is they got to just, the, the creation engine has to go and, and get shot in the back of the head, and they have to have a new engine. That's the first thing. Yeah. But... Then, yeah, a lot of the uh, games that I think Obsidian is running is is like on the Unreal Engine anyway. 
I I, th- I mean I think I think if it made Creation Engine version 2.0. Yeah. Perfectly serviceable when you do that with a game engine. Yeah. So... I mean but Yeah. Zenimax is now owned by uh Microsoft. What was that? I saw a meme. I think it was uh can't wait till Microsoft makes people finish their games. <laughs> well, you know what? Microsoft maybe can do something about that. I don't know. Um Yeah. It'll be uh it'll be interesting to see. Uh, what they do, what will happen with Starfield and all the rest of the games that they make. and Yeah, because they bought ZeniMax as a whole, so it's also all the studios. Arcane is under them now, and Machine Games, and Tango. And... I'm just impressed he sold Skyrim. And again, he's... Right? Sort of like... hmm. But, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with it. Um, it might be it might be scary to know what they're <laughs> going to do with it. Um, but, I don't know. They've had some pretty good acquisitions. They've been talking about the next one probably being Bungie. <laughs> they're going to, they're going to like, come back to us, Bungie. <laughs> oh, right, because they don't own Bungie anymore. No, they don't, but I think that they might be trying to get them back. Microsoft is just like, you know what we need to do to beat the PS5, right, guys? Own everything. We need to buy all our companies back. We need to buy everything back, and then we just give it away all on Game Pass. (laughs) And that will definitely sell systems. We just have an... uh, It's not false. No. And they're teaming up with uh, EA, so EA Play is going to be part of their Game Pass, too. But EA is terrible. (laughs) I think it's mostly because then it, they can put another, like, 60 games onto their Ultimate Game Pass. Because that's what EA Play has. So it's like, throw that in there, too. What else can we grab? We're going to be the Netflix of gaming. Let's go for it. We're, go- we're going all in. Um, Yeah. I, uh, I mean, they're definitely making a good push for, for that as a service over... PS5, but um, good, good going Microsoft, I guess. You spent a lot of money on this, so hoping it works for you. Uh, Dog meat. What do you want? I mean, they did. They spent a lot of money on it, Alex. Uh, I don't want to know how much they paid for. Dog meat. What do you got? What did What did you drop? What did you? James, should I tell him how much? Oh, dog meat just found a syringer. What? Wait, sorry. I'm also working on a, a class project at the same time we talk about this. You're going to have to repeat all of that again. Uh, that's that right. Nathan, someone wasn't listening to you for once. Um, that's every day, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't listening. <laughs> every day is like that. No, uh, I I was saying, um, should should I tell Alex, even though he has asked me not to, how much Microsoft bought Bethesda for? Oh, tell him. Everyone needs to know this. Seven point five billion dollars. A stupid amount. That that's very stupid. I mean, you gotta f- figure how many times they can sell Skyrim again now. <laughs> <laughs> They'll come up with a new Alexa. They need to Skyrim on the next one. Do yeah, it. Yeah, you'll be able to play uh, Skyrim on your Microsoft phone. Yeah. Yeah, that would be terrific. There is there is the real possibility, too, that even though Microsoft has them has a lot of these games, there's already a couple games that were supposed to be PlayStation exclusives that they're still going to honor as PlayStation exclusives. And, I mean, yeah, they'll make money that way. <laughs> but then the rest of them, and this is brilliant. This is a brilliant idea. Um, if if you like money, is they will start 
new games from all of their studios as exclusives for Xbox and and probably PC. And then like after three months or something, say, Yeah, it will go multi platform. And then we can also just sell it on the other systems too. Which is just it, it, s- smart to <laughs> to no end, but I mean, kind of. That's the whole thing that people are mad at Epic over, right? Uh, yeah, they are. But also, it's been working for Epic. Like, yeah, but... they've been making a lot of money off of it. Yeah, but people still don't like Epic because it's terrible and they don't know how to make their storefront work. Yeah, but it's one of those things. Like, people people were mad at EA too for like Battlefront two, but then when you realize like. Battlefront 2 still made, like, $9 billion or something like that. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I, I understand. Like, it was, it was the most downvoted thing on Reddit, but then it's like, oh, how many copies did they sell? Oh, 9 million in the first quarter instead of 12 mil. Oh, wow. Oh, no. They're gonna go broke. 9 million copies you sold? Okay. Um, doesn't really That's seem... That's a lot. It's it's a lot. I, I understand, like, everyone was like, it's the most downvoted thing. Oh, this is terrible. EA is going to go downhill so fast. It's like, yeah, they still made, like, almost a billion dollars on this damn game that you're saying was horrible. Like, that's not giving them a strong reason to not just do it again Yeah, for Battlefront 3. It's sort of like when people were like, oh, they're going to have to remake The Last Jedi. You mean the movie that made $1.2 billion at the box office? Yeah, they're totally going to be remaking that. It's a terrible disaster. <laughs> sure. Sure they're going to do that. That's nice. Yeah, we we don't really have a great track record with wanting something and then not support. No. <laughs> no, we, no, we do not. You are very much, you are very right about that. If something makes money, they, they will, they will keep making it. That's just the way it is. Um, if it doesn't make money, they they probably won't do it again. But they'll do it until it makes money. Or they'll, or well, if you're committed, if you're committed <laughs> to it. Um, no, the only thing I really want is uh just works it just works <laughs> actually you know what todd was kind of right it just works now <laughs> you just you just keep you know shoveling out as much as you possibly can wait till microsoft comes along buys you out for billions of dollars and then you can retire to a beach in boca or something and you're all <laughs> it just works congratulations I todd i wonder if they'll keep uh todd howard in Bethesda. Or if Todd Howard has already, like, driven off to the coast, like, I'm out of here, bitches. And he's out the door. I, I, I don't know. Todd, um... Todd really died on that 76 hill, I feel. <laughs> he kind of... That was the hill he wanted to die on, and he did. So... Hmm. Good. Technically, technically, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I guess works. No, it doesn't, Todd. <laughs> it it just works. Sixteen times the graphics. I hear that our games have bugs in them. Funny, funny Todd. Funny how you don't play test games anymore. <laughs> we you have us play test them for you. That's great. Uh, it's a perfect thing to be talking about. It's a real <laughs> passive aggressive vibe from uh uh, that statement right there, <laughs> not not un- inaccurate by any stretch of the imagination, no. but real passive aggressive. <laughs> oh no, I could be I could be aggressive aggressive and say I am tired of game studios selling me their beta. I want the game complete when you sell it to me. Yes, please. I don't want. Why would you? I don't want promises about like, oh, well, what the game's going to be in a year. If the game isn't ready for a year, I will just buy it in a year after you do all of that. But I don't think I'm going to buy it now under the promise that you're going to improve it later. I'm done with that. (laughs) 
You either sell me a complete game now, or I wait a year for you to fix the game, and then I buy it then at a reduced price. Or I don't buy it at all if you don't do it. Because I've gotten burned too many times, and I've seen this go south too many times. If 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 that's the way you want to play it, okay. We access on Steam. Oh God! And they're like, I want you to pay for this, and I'm like, no, fuck that. <laughs> Pardon my French, but no, I'm not paying for a half finished buggy game. No. Finish the game first, and then I'll pay for it. Yeah. Or give me some free access, and then make it cheaper when I when we get out of early access. But don't ask me to pace for something that's not done yet. That's that's absurd. That's just you don't that's do that. Part of the reason I don't really buy early access games. Yeah, if if you've given me a game that like I enjoy playing, okay, well yeah. that's that's a different subject. So, but, no. Yeah, but yeah, if if you if you can give me a game that is fun to play, uh, out of the gate, and you're saying okay, is this much? Well, oh, okay, fine. But if you're telling me that, like, well, you don't know what the game is going to be. No, I don't. You probably don't. I'm not, going, I'm not going to shell out money for what you tell me the game is going to be. I am not falling for the Star Citizen model of gaming here. <laughs> you, you wait. If, if, if you're telling me that the game isn't going to actually be complete for a year, well, then you're going to get screwed because I'm going to wait a year for the game to be completed and it will be on sale for like a third the price and I'll buy it then. That, that's the way it's going to be. But, um... Sorry, Bethesda. Hopefully Microsoft makes you finish your games now. <laughs> they How won't, they? but... They better. Yeah, they better. But even One like with, one. what was it? Um, uh, Obsidian had uh, Grounded, which is a fun game. I'll give them that. But they they did kind of have it in early access when they brought it out because there wasn't a lot of content to start with. And they didn't really need to do that because you give them give them like one or two more months and they probably would have had all the stuff in it by that time and they're like no we just got to get it out to people it's like all right by the way if you hate spiders do not play grounded you will you're gonna have a bad time oh yeah i've, I've seen it oh yeah the arachnophobia mode though very smart good good job now if only they couldn't like one shot me the second they get into a wolf they turn spite. spiders in, into an arachnophobia mode. Oh, you you have in arachnophobia mode because they realize some people are not cool with having giant spiders around. Is there's uh, several different levels that you can go through that make the spiders look less like spiders. Down to the point where they're like a little um, white blob with some eyes. If, if you want that. They're still... They can still, like, kill you in two hits. But... They don't look like spiders anymore. If you have arachnophobia. So... I think it's a nice option. But... I don't... I didn't have a huge problem with it. So I just went along with it but it was i my my big my bigger problem was the fact that i didn't like the fact that all of a sudden something could just jump out at me and you know hit me twice and kill me because that's what spiders do basically in the game and i was like okay that's a little excessive especially because i just started playing the game and all of a sudden there's a wolf spider that just got into my camp and just like looks at me and smacks me twice and i'm dead yeah well that's what you get for being near a wolf spider. I wasn't near a wolf spider. The wolf spider came to me. I didn't want to be near the wolf spider. That stupid wolf spider. They just come out of nowhere. That's the thing that's just annoying. You're just kind of like minding your own damn business and you turn around and there's a damn spider there. Now I hear there's yeah. a bird and I'm scared. 
I'm like, oh god, no, not birds. How many yeah, more things are you going to try to get me with? They're going to be a cat. I I can't. I don't know. I love the concept though. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids as a game is awesome. It's a great idea. Looks beautiful. Really pretty game. Um, but anyway. So yes, anyway, the big gaming news was from this last month pretty much was the indeed the acquisition of Bethesda by Microsoft, who is turning into like the Voltron of gaming <laughs> at this point. <laughs> just just stacking on. <laughs> They're doing the Disney thing, but in gaming. <laughs> just buy everything. <laughs> so mm. someone's gotta do it, right? Someone, someone's got to do it. Might as well be Microsoft. Hi, DC. How are you doing tonight? Hello. Mm. Hello, DC. We were, uh, we we were we were just having a tiny chat. Uh, a tiny chat. That doesn't sound right. Tiny chat. <laughs> tiny chat. We were having a tidy chat about that whole thing where uh, Bethesda is owned by uh, Microsoft now, and um, what what happens now that uh, Microsoft owns everything? Uh, who knows? I'm kind of scared, but uh, it's okay. Microsoft is here for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Microsoft yeah, loves as you. you pay, as long as you pay whatever it is for Game Pass, you're fine. Don't worry about it. I mean, I mean, Nathan is over there on a Mac, so Microsoft ain't here for you, buddy. <laughs> Microsoft is not here for me, but I have the Xbox, so they're there for me uh, in that capacity. So that's something. I'll have. Uh, I'll have that going for me. They like me in the console way, but just as a console friend. We're we're not serious like with PCs. Right. Yeah, exactly. They they respect me in certain ways, but they also dismiss me they'll entirely. Take your money. They'll take your money. Oh, they'll take my money. They will definitely do that. But it's kind of like that distracted meme like uh <laughs> Like, I'm, you know, the, the, the PC is the one that's passing by, and the console is the one that's over over here that you're with. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, yeah, PC. Yeah, I know, right, man? <laughs> because there was speculation that Microsoft is kind of not interested so much in the console market anymore. They really, they really want the PC market, which I get, um, but... Still, you know, y'all got in. Oh, it looks like they're kind of the the leaders in. Uh, I I think I heard you say a little earlier that Netflix is gaming. Oh yeah. And I think you know they they really want that up front because well that probably is a big part of the future. Uh, maybe not the whole package, but and the earlier they get in on that, it, you know, and it could be like any other thing Microsoft does. The first one you're like meh at, but then they make like a really excellent product down the line. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, the the first Surface wasn't that great, but the Surface Pros now are excellent machines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, I um my my thinking on it is Microsoft saw that uh the 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 idea of streaming games. Or having downloadable, like, you know, subscription models was going to be a thing. And said, let's buy it all before another company does. Because if we don't get there first, Sony or Google or Amazon at this point will jump on it and acquire them all. Let's just get in there, get them first, and then we've locked everything down. <laughs> And they're 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 doing a good job of it, um, you know. Uh, they're 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 teaming up with EA for the subscription. They have Bethesda now. They already bought Obsidian. They bought In Exile. They might be getting Bungie. I'm not sure. I've heard some things, but 
yeah, just buy it all up now, and uh, then, you know, we're good. We don't have to worry about the competition later. We'll get in <laughs> on the ground floor. This is the new hotness. We'll do it now. And then uh, when everybody else eventually realizes this was a good idea, too damn bad. We've already bought everything. Right. So, you know. And, uh, you know, I have way more faith in Microsoft doing something with this than say, <laughs> Google Stadia because Google just like, oh, no. oh uh, people kind of even sort of like this or didn't like this. Well, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, you you got two months before we get rid of it, so save whatever you need. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we just decided <laughs> against it at a certain point. We can't fix that lag. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. Oh well. You know, or, yeah. Or Microsoft's gonna you know reiterate on it and make it you know n no company's perfect, but no. at least I have more faith in them keeping up with the product <laughs> even if it's online streaming you know they'll yeah they'll no. do better at it in the long run no no if if google had decided oh yeah a streaming service and they had started buying these up you would never see another game in any of the series ever again <laughs> it would just be gone when's that elder scrolls 6 coming out never oh okay never. <laughs> oh Oh, no, when we do, like, Stadia 2, so never, okay. <laughs> Glad we got around to that. Um, yeah, no, it, 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 no I, I do feel at least Microsoft's going to do something with the property, and that's nice. Um, and I'm sure that they're looking to get ahead of Sony for this console generation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they it looks like they definitely are. Um, but... Uh, yeah, there. The thing that does concern I me mean, is uh, some... uh, both the. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh no, go go right ahead. I uh, both the. Uh, I don't. I don't want to say lower end, but least expensive versions of the, uh, whatever they're calling the Xbox and the the PlayStation Five mm -hmm. are pretty compelling. To... Yeah, yeah. Even the like the Series X. Uh, but. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm like, they that's seem... not bad uh, for what they're offering. It's, yeah. it's a that's a high powered machine. That's like a it's like the the specs on that are what you'd expect from a pretty good gaming PC today. And for five hundred, that's that's not a bad price, really. Um, but yeah, three hundred for the S, uh, and I, I think it's three hundred or four hundred for uh, the PS Five if you're just doing the digital version. Um, yeah, no, those, those those are perfectly in line with like the last console generation, so can't really complain about that. Um, and it it is probably because they're trying to get as <laughs> as many people converted to their system as possible right up at the front. <laughs> Because they're so tight in competition right now, um, I do love that Nintendo's just off on the side, just kind of going, "We're just going to make whatever we want for a system, and people are going to buy it, so we don't care." <laughs> we're like, yeah, we're just kind of like, "Yeah, we just made the switch. It's fine." <laughs> we're you got Animal Crossing? Yep, I'm there. Okay, <laughs> you got the got the Super Smash? Well, we 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 do. You won't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we do uh we do the pokemon we got that uh zelda thing remember the zelda we we do that mario you know the mario <laughs> and this hey we're the one-stop shop for all that sorry can't get them anywhere else um yeah and then all, all the initial reports and this seems to happen with most nintendo consoles ever since We've had, you know, the internet to expand on all these things and everything. Yeah. Is that they're all like, oh, it's an underpowered system for the generation or whatever. And yeah, some of their systems don't work like the Wii U. But mm -hmm. what whatever unique little thing they come out with mm -hmm. does really well. Okay. And so, and, you know, oh, we, you know, the, the Switch is, isn't that powerful. Here's Breath of the Wild. Oh, this is one of the greatest games of all time. So you're telling me one of the greatest games of all time is running on an underpowered system. 
Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that, well. That is what they're yeah. saying. Yeah. That's <laughs> okay. What they're saying. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, we're, we're, like what? There's a disconnect for me there, and <laughs> I uh, yeah. I th I think my my problem with that whole idea is that uh, great games don't have to run on serious hardware, and they don't have to right. require serious hardware. They just have to be great games. I would much rather play. Uh, a game that's like 10 years old that was a great game that's going to fly on modern hardware than the new game that has trouble struggling to do 20 FPS now um, because it's going to be a better experience for me anyway. And the game was good. And if if the game is good, it doesn't need to have great hardware. Um, you know, uh, for a lot of people, Minecraft and stuff like that is great. It's not necessarily graphically profuse. But it doesn't mean that the game isn't good. <laughs> right. It doesn't mean that the game isn't good. Um, and, and I think the thing, too, is for, like, Breath of the Wild, it's built for that system. Like, it was, mm -hmm. it was built for Switch. Um, a lot of games are, are built so that they can be on cross-platforms, so you never know what the performance is going to be like on, on any single one. And in those cases, I could see where the Switch version might have a little trouble struggling along but for their first re for nintendo's first release stuff no that's all going to be solid across the board they built it specifically for their system so uh, i i don't know there's a case to be made for not worrying too much about your system <laughs> specs yeah <laughs> um, that being said so though i am find a game series you like and go with it yeah. it's fine <laughs> that, that being said the the appeal of like the xbox series x having like what 10 teraflop data transfer is is very compelling for me <laughs> mostly because a lot of games that i'm currently playing i'm like boy this would have run so much better if my hardware was beefed up Ooh, <laughs> i love borderlands 3 but man if those load screens were a lot shorter and the frame weight was more consistent and i could play it in 4k that would be terrific Ooh, if I only had a system like that. Are you trying to play that. it on your computer, or are you trying to play it I don't on have a computer, Alex. I have a Mac. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you should get... You know what you should do, Nathan, is get a uh, get a computer that can run stuff. I do like, need to do that. I do need like, to do uh, that. Like, you know, yeah. that can run Discord. <laughs> That that is that is something I do have to do. I I do need to get an actual gaming like PC so that I can uh, run stuff. And then then I can do streaming more often and yeah. and play pirates online break. like everybody wants me to. <laughs> yeah, and then you cannot break up during conversations we have. I mean, I break up during most conversations I have in real life, Alex. Uh, I mean, yeah, very yeah. true. This is very true. Uh, it's a problem. I'm uh, I'm seeing a therapist about it. So anyway, <laughs> um, I th I think that the goal was to eventually talk about something that was spooky, because October. <laughs> I think it was. Um, actually, uh, something that came up when I was mentioning that earlier was from Tabletop Salt. I wanted to actually get that comment in uh, that. Uh, Tabletop Salt had said that he would love to hear our thoughts on classic monsters and ghost stories and how those might translate into a horror-themed tabletop adventure. Now, I have actually played a horror-themed tabletop adventure thanks to DC. So, yay! yay. And that was you fun. Too, that was fun. Uh, as as a one shot, that was the first time I played Percy, uh, so that was fun. Um, but besides that, can't really say that I've <laughs> I've done so. I've never played like World of Darkness. I've never played Call of Cthulhu, so I don't really know um, much about those in particular. But I was starting to think about, like, in terms of classic monsters, if we weren't just looking at, like, you know, vampires and werewolves and ghosts, which which are usually somewhere inside of, um, you know, uh, tabletop games. But if you were to look at, like, classic, almost like the universal monsters, you know, um, 
you know, Creature from the Black Lagoon and the, you know, Frankenstein and, and all of those. Um, uh, I, w I was thinking about, like, how those would be implemented into a game. I mean, you could just make them into a monster and just have them fight him. Uh, but then you'd need to have, like, Abbott and Costello around, and I don't know how, how that's going to work. Can I have Abbott and Costello as uh, PCs? And when? Those are two <laughs> questions. I'm, I'm Abbott, who wants Costello. Alex, you, you on board? We're, uh, we can play Abbott and Costello, and we'll go on an adventure to meet the uh, Frankenstein. Uh, I don't think I'm as familiar with Abbott and Costello as you may think I am. I mean, Boris Karloff can guest star. That would be great. That really would be great. Yeah, Vincent Price. I need a Vincent Price yeah. in my life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Abbott and Costello were a comedy duo from back in the day, Alex. They, uh, they were called Abbott and Costello. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't mean I watch their stuff. That's all me. Oh, okay. I saw some of their stuff. I did watch some of that. Um, back in the day? Back in the day. Laurel and Hardy. I watched Laurel and Hardy. Toyland. Bays in Toyland. I saw that. Um, I like Laurel and Hardy. They're Laurel and Hardy was great. Laurel and Hardy were great. The Marx Brothers. I did like the Marx Brothers. They were fun. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Those, those were great. I think I like the Marx Brothers more than the Three Stooges. Uh, oh, I, yeah, definitely. I appreciated the Three Stooges, but still. I, I found more meat on the bones for the Marx Brothers. <laughs> there, there's, there's a little bit more going on for them. <laughs> um, but, no, it's in terms of classic comedy duos, no. Uh, Abbott and Costello, who's on first, what's on second. Uh, but then also, yeah, meet, uh, they meet Frankenstein. Which was great. That's like before they did the whole thing, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, like that. That was like, oh, look, we could get all the movie monsters together at one time in a movie, and Abbott and Costello would meet them, and they'll be played by the people that actually play them in the other movies and everything. That was uh, spectacular. That was spectacular. Never saw it, but I bet it was. <laughs> <laughs> I've never actually watched it, but I've heard great things. Classic. A classic movie. You know, just combine that with uh, Bob Hope and Bing Crosby's road movies. and Oh, yeah. You got yourself a whole lot of adventures. Oh, you do. You do. That's actually a movie I should think about watching for the season. Is the Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein. Um now I have to figure out if it's on any streaming service and which, if I if I happen to have the one that it's on. That's what I need to find out. Um, I think there's an Abbott and Costello that meets the mummy, and that's yeah. pretty good. Oh, I like that one. Oh, yeah, the mummy. That's good stuff, too. Um, so, yeah, the mummy, Creature from Black Lagoon, Invisible Man, you got, you got the Frankenstein... You got a lot of these really interesting characters that are around, and you could probably use them in your home games. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know exactly how they would function. Uh, if the Frankenstein's monster just kind of like chases you around, like a, a house or something like that, but um, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> oh my god! Bless goodness. you. <sighs> Stop dying. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm dying of a plague. That must be what it is. Oh, that's scary, too. Oh, no. Maybe I have one of those movie plagues. I'm coming down with whatever the wolfman had. It's oh. A-timing. Oh. I'm coming down with wolfman fever. It's... I'm, I'm hungry like the wolf, Alex. I'm, I'm feeling it right now. I'm, I'm turning... Oh, hey, you know, lycanthropy is a thing in gaming, isn't it? I forgot about that. Alex, your character can uh, change into a, a were-tiger, right? Uh, no. 
Yeah. One second. Like, uh, like, uh, RPG design? Nope, like, uh, digital design, like, graphic design stuff. Ooh, like, fun. She works pro as a professional designer. She actually joined the server, uh, not that long. Just cause. So I might actually plug her stuff sometime for her. Cause I think she's really good. And she's really shy. Um, oh my goodness. Uh, is that Nathan I hear? It is. Oh, he lives. How unfortunate. James, rain check. Oh. <laughs> no, sorry. Sorry, I realized We were, that we were talking about how we're hiring James on as our new co-host because you were dead. Oh. But I mean, I mean, we, we, we could still do it. James, you're still, I mean. What? What? You're still in consideration here. What? What? what what's what's happening? I I I swear I swear I'm not turning into a werewolf. I'm I'm just turning into a regular wolf. I'm fine. Are you in a werewolf? I am in a werewolf. A werewolf? Yes. I'm oh, a their wolf. Are you a werewolf? <laughs> you should be. I'm a win wolf. What about a why wolf? I'm a who wolf. <laughs> or a That's how what they wolf. really teach you in journalism class. Yeah. The who wolf, the when wolf, the <laughs> werewolf, the what wolf, and the why wolf of the whole thing. But of course, the real question the how much wolf. <laughs> <laughs> All of the important Ooh, wolf face questions <laughs> you have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. So, hey, there's an idea. Ooh, that would be a really interesting idea for a tabletop game. Actually, would be uh, yeah, just have all have the question wolf. No, Ooh. would be uh, Ooh. one of your PC characters is. It turning into a wolf and you don't know which one. Ooh. So werewolf, but RPG edition? Yes. We one Night Werewolf, but as an RPG. And you don't know who... That's kind of like, uh, what, 28 Days Later, all of a sudden one of your PCs gets bit by a zombie. And uh, you don't know if they're going to turn or not, but you have to count down the seconds. Until they do. But it's rounds. It's like rounds of combat. That's scary. Now I'm terrifying myself. But, uh, yeah, no, the idea of, like, the mummy or... There was a movie called The Ghost of Frankenstein. The Ghost of... Yeah, there's a lot of Frankenstein movies. <laughs> I just find that the... Especially if you go into the Hammer Horror catalog. Oh. I really need a night vision scope in this. <laughs> My nights are so dark in this Fallout 4 game now. I can't see anything. This is... T <laughs> That's spooky in itself. I guess the thing that confuses me about the ghost of Frankenstein is... Frankenstein as a ghost seems somehow less menacing than regular Frankenstein. I feel like one of the things that's scary about Frankenstein is how physically imposing he is. And if he's a ghost now, he's he's non-corporeal. I don't find that nearly as scary. Now but he's he just you. he's but now he's just slow and he's shambling. And also, he's a ghost. So, I mean, I I don't I don't find that scary. Was it good at all? It was Lon Chaney. So there's that. Maybe Lon Chaney should just be my NPC in in the, and you could just fight Lon Chaney. <laughs> or Bella Lugosi. 
these these feel like more menacing figures. Well, if you get Lon Chaney, just you know, get a disguise kit, and you can be any monster you want. Oh, that's actually a really good idea. Make sure that I have the disguise kit, and I'm proficient in it. All good. Yeah, bard or a rogue, perfect. Yeah, at least in D and D universe. Yeah, that that's uh, perfectly fine. Ooh, thought process as I'm looking at what was not a very good movie, but Van Helsing, great model for a PC character. Totally getting behind that. I would want to play a Van Helsing. Maybe I could be um, Chad Van Helsing. Chad Van Helsing. I'm gonna just be. I'm gonna be <laughs> Chad Van Helsing. He's a total Chad. I'm definitely a Chad. <laughs> and it's Van Helsing. And, um, what, uh... To your vampire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, um... Now I'm trying to figure out what his name was in the actual movie. I don't remember. I don't think I care enough to to look it up, but um, I love that one of the questions that pops up is who is the real Van Helsing? Me. Oh, you is finally Bond, is it Bond Van Helsing? That'd be great. <laughs> it's Todd Van Helsing. <laughs> it's his. Is is it Abraham Van Helsing? Uh, I guess. I guess I guess that's who it. I guess when Bram Stoker created it, I guess that's who it was. Uh, Abraham, Abraham Van Helsing is the is the real in terms of the made up character that. <laughs> if you're talking about the original made up character, then yes, it's Abraham. But there, there was no real. There was no real person, Van Helsing. I mean, I'm sure there's people that are named Van Helsing, but not the not the character that you think of as the actual vampire hunter, Van Helsing. But a great idea for a character design. I would totally play someone like that, or like join an organization that hunts vampires. Or the occult. That would be pretty cool. I get behind that. It would be oh, yeah. X Files. Uh, I think it would be World of Darkness. No, Alex, it's now X Files. <laughs> I'm gonna make it X Files. And you could play the uh, tabletop game like that. You could do that for anything, though. You could do that for for D and D. You could do that for probably Star Wars. You you just uh, go around and, um, uh, yeah, do the Buffy the Vampire Slayer thing. Or, uh, yeah, X-Files. Or Scooby-Doo. Why aren't there more RPGs where people just model their characters after the Scooby-Doo squad? Um, that... You can do that without a set of rules, Nathan. I totally intend on doing that. The question is, what character? I would absolutely be Shaggy if we did this. Okay. I call dibs. You call dibs on Shaggy? Oh, okay. I do. Zoinks. I call dibs on Old Man Jenkins. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. Scrappy. I'm Scrappy, too. I want Scrappy. Alex, who are you? And, and is no longer acknowledged as canon. <laughs> they make fun of Scrappy on their own. Exactly. I want Scrappy. Uh, no, 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 no. I will. I don't want to no be Fred. No one wants to be Scrappy Dappy Do. I don't want to be <laughs> Fred. <laughs> no one wants to be Fred. I can't pull off the ascot. Yes, I... you can. Anything's an ascot if you try hard enough. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll no. I can pick somebody else. Alex, who do you want to be if we're doing Scooby Doo? Um, noting oh Shaggy is no longer off the table. Table, so. But, oh, uh, Velma. 
Not a bad choice. You can pull off Velma. Me? Yeah. Jinkies. <laughs> I... I don't know if I want to be. I mean, it's better than Daphne, I guess. It's kind of useless. <laughs> What's wrong with Daphne? <laughs> She's kind of useless. She just kind of goes and uh, hangs well, out Well, so Fred. is Fred. Like, half the half the Scooby Squad is pointless anyway. Let's face it. No, it's not false. Like, di- let's just get down to it. Like, you know, Scooby and Shaggy have, like, a, a relationship thing that y- you can't really break up. And-, and Velma's got, like, investigative skills. No one else really does but, anything in the Scooby Squad. Daphne's a reporter, isn't she? Is she? I don't know. In some versions of the canon, she is. Yeah. In some, she's just kind of hanging out. Yeah, and then. Uh, and Fred is good with traps. Yeah, he he's like he's your uh, trap builder. He uh, why is Fred the rogue? You don't ever want to play the hunk rogue. That's that's fair. Swashbuckler. Yeah, he's a swashbuckler. It's totally what he is. What is Scooby Shaggy? Enough. Shaggy's a chef, actually. I thought Shaggy was like actually really rich. He's he also is. very rich. Yeah, he's a rich chef. <laughs> yeah, in in one of the uh, I forget. There's a video I watch on YouTube. Uh, in in one of the canon universes, yeah, I think it's actually game theory or sorry, film theories <laughs> about it. In one of the canon universes, he's a chef. Hmm. Like, it's, it's what if the mystery gang wasn't doing the mystery stuff? Yeah, he would be a chef. He'd be a chef. Like, famous chef, I think, possibly. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. yeah, I mean, he likes to eat. It makes a lot of sense that he would be, you know, doing I, something with food. I mean, in all fairness, most humans do enjoy eating. Not as much as he does. But does he... Have you seen how thin he is? That's from all the weed, Nathan. (laughs) Believe me, you can be that thin and have nothing going on and eat all you want. Trust me. A lot of long drinks. No, not really. Um, Is that why they're always seeing ghosts? (laughs) No, oh, know what it was? There was a, a, an episode where they did a crossover of Supernatural. Oh. And, like, all the ghosts and stuff became real. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> That's Pretty terrifying. fantastic. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. I... Sco- <laughs> Scooby-Doo. Yeah. See, now I gotta... Now I gotta check... Shaggy's real name is Norville Rogers. I mean, I don't know. Who names their kid that? Norville. Lots of people who are rich, apparently. (laughs) Oh, I forgot Scooby. Horrible name. I forgot Scooby Doo also had a cousin called Scooby Dumb. Oh, man. We don't talk about Scooby Dumb. There's so many, there's so much lore behind Scooby Doo. It's been going on for how many years? I mean, it was originally the original series was sixty nine to seventy. So we're we're fifty years in now. Fifty one years in. So yeah, I suppose there's going to be a lot of lore about Scooby Doo, but. I'm fascinated with these characters. So basically, Scooby Doo. If I'm if I'm looking at now, I now I have to dig into this a little bit. Basically, Scooby Doo is a D and D party. If kind of yeah, because you got what? So you have so if Fred's a rogue, and 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 Scooby's a druid. Scooby's a druid. Uh, yeah, I think no. Stuck no, in no, 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 no. Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, I just said it. Um, Frank. Scraggy is just a an old style ranger with the beast companion. 
Ah, uh, yeah. Oh. That makes sense. Okay. That's that's cool. All right. Scooby's the familiar. <laughs> Scooby's the familiar. <laughs> A very large familiar. <laughs> sure. It's fine. That's why he talks. Magic. Um then what Velma's the cleric, right? I think uh, Velma's the cleric. And Velma's the wizard. Yeah. Velma's the wizard, okay. He's not. He uses intelligence and Daphne's all charisma. So she's the bard. I mean paladin. <laughs> I'm just I'm just trying I'm trying to I tried to figure out what what class they are for this party that we have to create. Um, this is getting out of hand. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll we'll stop on Scooby Doo. Next up is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Okay, so I'm thinking <laughs> Willow is obviously the wizard. No, warlock. Uh, I'm not talking. <laughs> <laughs> Buffy is paladin. Go and paladin because fights undead. Fight they her. all fight undead. Yes, but she's a holy warrior <laughs> that's, that's that's destined to fight the undead. Therefore, go and paladin. Any slayer should be a paladin. There's my hot take for the night. Slayers would have to be paladins. Now, um, uh, what? Xander, Xander's a bard. Yes. This makes sense to me. And then obviously the vampires are just characters with lycanthropy. Or uh, with vampirism and um, uh, whoever Seth Green played <laughs> has lycanthropy. Has anyone else here watched Buffy? Oh, yeah. Okay. See, Alex, I'm not weird. Uh, you are weird. That's not the point. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that you weren't just talking. You know. Never seen it, but want to. I mean, fair enough. Go for it. It's old now. <laughs> it's terrific. Are you kidding me? Buffy the Vampire Slayer is terrific. You just don't understand, Alex. It's fine. Oh, well, damn. I mean, I didn't watch it. My sisters watched it, so I mean. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm fun. Fun fact is that um, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, obviously played by Sarah Michelle Gellar, who was then also in the Scooby Doo movies, which brings us back to Scooby Doo. Perfect. So. <laughs> Now we can. Good job. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Hey, Alex. Guess what? We're back to talking about. Is anything other than that? Uh, okay. Okay. Fine. By that, I mean anything other than Buffy. Anything other than Buffy? <laughs> okay. Don't worry. Yeah. I'll think of. I'll. I'll think of something else that we can try to do as canon in D and D. Um, Great. No, we're not doing Tony the Tiger. <laughs> It's great. Serial mascots and D&D. Serial mascots and <laughs> <in D &D. laughs> Sounds like it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Tony the Tiger is definitely a fighter. Or a... No, druid. Tony the Tiger is a druid. A were, a were tiger. I'm going with that. I don't, I don't think that we should do like weird stuff if they're all going to be in D&D &D, cuz then it's just a lot of animals that are weird things. <laughs> oh, well, you know. Okay, well if I can't talk about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, then I have to think of something else that's going to be spooky themed. Uh, horror movies? No, I don't really watch horror movies, so that doesn't work for me. For those listening at home, James had to leave, and we wish him well today. Goodbye, James. James got grabbed by the Goonies. The, the, the Goonies or the Ghoulies? The Ghoulies. That's who I meant. I knew I said something wrong, but I couldn't remember what. <laughs> he got grabbed by the Ghoulies, which was which was a t 
Not a great game for Rare, but, you know. <laughs> but they had to make something for Microsoft. Oh, I brought it back to Microsoft. Acquisitions, too. <laughs> this is really a circular conversation. Um, yeah, circular full moons. Talk about full moons and werewolves. Oh, yeah. very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. So. We figured out Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo, Doo, where are you? I mean, Somewhere I don't else. think anyone will really figure out Scooby Doo. It is a philosophical masterpiece of our time. But we've done that. And then, much to Alex's chagrin, we talked about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So I won't do that again. We're moving yeah. on to Angel. So in Angel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, David Boreanaz is pretty great as an actor. At least he's still doing something. <laughs> no, I won't, I won't do Angel. I just wanted to say that because I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> um, um, but we won't, we won't do that. Um, I'm trying to think what other creepy television series I've watched that, that like dealt with the macabre. Um, like, uh... Got really it. quick, someone did at Shaggy for D and D Fifth Edition. I just thought of this. Oh, really? Yeah. Let's see if I can find it. Ooh. While we look that up, I'm gonna try to remember what TV shows I have watched because, boy, I watch a lot of them. I watch way more than I even remember watching. So, here you go. Posted by uh, Shaggy himself, Matthew Lillard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so is it like Super Saiyan Shaggy? Oh my god, it is Super Saiyan Shaggy. <laughs> of course it is. He's a, In this, he's a medium groovy god, unaligned. <laughs> <laughs> Is he only using 10% of his power, though? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's a challenge rating 30. <laughs> so. isn't, the, isn't it usually like a challenge rating 20 is the max challenge rating, right? Right. <laughs> okay, so. that makes sense then. Yeah, that's him using like 10% of his power. You got to get those shaggy memes in now. I'm scared. What? <laughs> Have, are you not familiar with the Shaggy memes? Am I not familiar with sh the Shaggy memes? Nathan, are you not familiar with the Shaggy memes? I guess not. I don't know what you're oh, talking. How, what DC? You're you're familiar with the the Shaggy memes, right? The the Shaggy the thing. The I... memes, Nathan. The memes. I don't. I, I hate memes as a general rule of thumb, so probably what? not. What? What? I, what? I find I find memes to be um overly redundant, to be honest with you. Um, but wow, I I find memes to be you know kind of kind of pointless and and useless but no please tell me all about the the, the shaggy memes no now i don't don't know what to do with you now <laughs> you don't know what how, to do how, with... how are we how is this possible <laughs> how is it possible that i'm not into memes yeah i i, I mean wanna... they just they're 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 stupid <laughs> I, i'm sorry i'm sorry but like Memes is I'm as sorry, a listeners, but I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you could memes. I don't. I don't get me like memes in a general rule of thumb that just feel pointless. Um. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty. That's that's pretty much it. They feel kind of pointless. Wasn't Guy Ferrari for strong for, opinions this episode? Yeah, <laughs> wasn't Guy Ferrari or whatever the hell his name is? Wasn't he a meme for a while? There were there were Guy, Guy Ferrari. <laughs> Guy, <laughs> <laughs> Guy Ferrari uh, is uh, 
yeah, that guy who owns a Ferrari, he's uh he's he was a he was a he was one of those memes once upon a time, right? Guy Ferrari action hero. Yeah. <laughs> Ferrari yeah. action hero. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 dude. Wasn't he a meme for a while? Was wasn't there a Probably. I don't want to be a meme person. <laughs> I feel like there's a whole thing like some some people are just memes. And I don't know. I don't know why. Why do people have to be memes? Why can't they just be people? Matthew Lillard is a meme. That makes wow. sense. Here, here's a Google image search for guy Ferrari. <laughs> guy Ferrari? <laughs> guy Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need Guy Ferraris. I will actually open this just to see what happens. Guy Fieri memes. Oh, okay, yeah. When the sauce is too bomb diggity. Yeah, okay, good, good. Yeah, yeah, no, no, there's there's plenty. No, he's taking you to flavor country. Yeah. USA. <laughs> um, oh, thank you. Thank you, Guy who owns a Ferrari. Thank you, you very much. Do you not watch Food Network, Nathan? He I not watch anything, I guess. <laughs> I, I, no, I watch Food Network, but you see, when I watch Food Network, I, I haven't watched it in a very long time. But when I did, I usually watched it for Iron Chef. I was watching for the Iron Chef. I needed that in my life. Iron Chef's amazing. Iron Chef was amazing. I love that. It was so good. And begin! And then it just got <laughs> You have you have like a time limit. You gotta do it now. You you can, no no time of wasting. I love the idea of food as like a timed competition show. It's like best chefs in the world competing against each other. Excellent. Excellent stuff. Um Yeah, besides that I didn't really care. Like <laughs> the the rest, of, the rest of it, I, I did not watch the diners and the drive-ins and the and the dives, that Mr. Ferrari used to do. Uh, <laughs> I've, I think, I, I, I love the hair. Wish I could make my hair look like that. Yes, I know, Alex. I don't have any hair. I didn't even hear what you said. So good. Don't worry. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm going to dunk on myself this time so that you don't even have to. Oh, well, I mean, if your internet didn't keep cutting out in the conversation, I could dunk on you. <laughs> so, there you go. Dunked on you again. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fine. Be that way. Yep. Yep. Anyway. Be like that sometimes, Nathan. Anyway, uh, good for you, Guy Ferrari. What was the Shaggy meme? Just there's a lot of them. Just look up. I'm just look up Shaggy memes. Okay, fine, I'll fine, 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 fine. Shaggy <laughs> meme. Here, here we go. No, you know what? I'm gonna do it on air so people can see me looking up Shaggy memes. <laughs> I'm going to look Perfect. up Shaggy Me. Oh, look, there's a, yeah. And it's all Matthew Lillard. Of course it's all Matthew Lillard. It's all Matthew Lillard. Of course it is, Nathan. <laughs> yes, there, it's, it's, it's all just Matthew Lillard. Um, of course it is. So it's not so much, oh, well, no, it's not all Matthew Lillard. I, sorry, I didn't It's know. mostly Matthew Lillard. Yes. It's mo it's mostly Matthew Lillard. So um great. Okay. Um yep. <laughs> He's not impressed. All right. That's a that's a thing. Wasn't Drake a meme? Drake I is still a meme. <laughs> <laughs> Drake's a meme. Uh I'm a meme. Dr a drama mean, yeah. <laughs> if if you experience drowsiness after trying Drake, 
you should <laughs> consult the doctor immediately. Uh, <laughs> Dracamine. Oh, I am surprised he hasn't branded that yet. Um, Daphne Blake. Oh, oh, Daphne's last name is Blake, which rhymes with Drake. So anyway, Daphne is, um, I'm trying to figure out if she was actually even a reporter. Was she a reporter? Is that like a thing? In the meantime, I'm doing research to figure out what Daphne actually is. <laughs> In the in the series. Um, and for the record, because I know some people that are probably just joining us right now, I'm not talking about Daphne from Frasier. Yeah. Talk, because some people were probably very confused. Obviously, Daphne in Frasier is a healthcare worker and takes care of their elderly father. Is that what she is? Um... Yes, did you never watch Frasier? I didn't really. I, I watched some of it and really watched a lot of things. Yeah. Maybe if Frasier was a meme, you'd care. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me look up Frasier memes. <laughs> can... If it's not a meme, it's unimportant. Basically. There's a ton of Frasier memes. <laughs> There's a ton of them. Um, <laughs> I, I'll find. I, yeah, so they wore eggnog and they wore of your fancy sherry glass. Yeah, this is perfect. Here, Alex, I'll share. I'll share a Fraser meme with you, and then you can feel happy about yourself knowing that it's a meme. Here, here. This is good. I know we're a couple seasons early for this one, but still, I'll share it with you. You can think about it when you're coming up on Christmas. There, when somebody pours eggnog into one of your fancy sherry glasses. See, that? that's that's perfect. That's the look I would give. That's a Frasier meme. See memes? <laughs> yeah. That's a meme. Aren't you, aren't you oh. glad that memes are real? Aren't you so glad? Would you... Every everything's a meme if you want it to be. Don't worry, memes. I'll love you even if Nathan won't. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to do it. <laughs> Might as well be DC. <laughs> I. <laughs> there should be there should be Halloween memes. There probably are. There, there are hello memes. Yeah, yeah, hello memes. Those. See, see, yeah, I don't, I don't understand memes. I just, I just don't. I don't understand memes. Right now, I'm trying to look up like what are the best memes, and all of this just looks like gibberish. This is this is this is just a giant this is just a giant wall of just nonsensical <laughs> gibberish right now. And I don't I don't understand any of it. I know I'm supposed to be an internet person. Like a modern a modern person and memes are like part of our culture, but sorry folks, I I don't know why people care about this stuff. Oh no, I remember Nathan this. Having a... I'm having an existential crisis. No, I. Yeah, oh, a little bit. It's okay. It's okay, Alex. I found the best meme. This is one I did know. This is one I knew. I knew that meme. I kn I knew the Justin Timberlake. It's gonna be May. Meme. That's oh, a meme. Okay. I'm, gl I'm glad you knew that one. I knew that one. So there's that. Boom. See? I'm edumacated yeah. about memes. The the <laughs> the Justin Timberland or whatever whatever it is. Justin <laughs> Timberland. Hanging out with guy in Ferrari. <laughs> just just having a good time of it. Good stuff. 
So, um... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is getting cringy now, Nathan. <laughs> What's your favorite meme, Alex? There, do you know how many memes there are, Nathan? Too damn many. <laughs> That's the point. There's too damn many. I can't even keep up with all the memes. You really? Yeah. I think memes are um, scary. It's a perfect time of year to be talking about memes. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, well fine, fine, Al. If memes are so great, then um, we'll make a D&D &D party out of memes. That sounds great. Let's do that. Or yeah. emojis. We could emojis. have a D&D &D party of emojis. I'm the met emoji. And I'm voiced by T.J. Miller. <laughs> that's, that's me. There you go. Do you want to be the high five or the poop? You get the choice. Nope. Nope. Neither. Oh, darn. Well, I tried. I tried to understand this internet culture thing. <laughs> I failed. I failed miserably. Yes. <laughs> I still cannot tell you what Daphne's occupation was. <laughs> Maybe she was a reporter? I don't know. Um something about a sky skeleton. Scooby Doo was a weird show. It really was. Although, now that I think about it, most of the Hanna-Barbera cartoons kind of were. Because, like, the Flintstones, that's not realistic. The, di the dinosaurs weren't totally around. Realistic. I'm the, but the dinosaurs weren't around at the same time as the cavemen. And the cavemen didn't have cars that we know of. Sure and they did. What kind of cars did they have? I mean, I know what cars they had in the show. But, I don't know. I mean, they had the wheel, I guess. So there's something. There's part of a car. The Jetsons? I... I don't believe that for a second. No? No. I've never seen the hover cars. And, and, uh... As far as I'm, like, Rosie... Um, I, I've never met uh, robots that were, you know, that sociable. Yet. Yet. I know. Will Rosie ever find love? They never answer these questions in the show. It's a real shame. But yeah, no, the Hanna-Barbera cartoons are a little bit odd. I did like when they did the crossover episodes. Ooh, Alex, do you remember when they did the crossover episode where the Jetsons met the Flintstones? That was, like, before the Marvel Cinematic Universe crossover universe. They did that. That was way better. Anywho, but Scooby-Doo wasn't involved in that. Oh, no. Fail. Epic fail. Sorry for it. it you, you go yeah. all in or you don't go at all. It's the way it works. Is that how it works? Um, that's that's what I've been told by my life coach. <laughs> you go, you go all in, or you don't go at all. And my life coach is Scooby Doo. That's See, why we're talking. It all comes about. full circle. It all comes full circle, or. No, actually, Scooby-Doo's advice to you would be, um, uh, when there's trouble, run away. Is that the Scooby's, uh, trick? That's, that's how Scooby, that's how you get a Scooby snack. No. Oh. You get a Scooby snack if you don't run away from trouble. How is it that he always got the Scooby snacks? Carefully. He... Yeah. 
The thing that never made sense to me about Scooby Doo, though, since so, since I'm on Scooby Doo, okay. That yeah, yes. <laughs> the next episode is all brought to you by the Scooby Game. <laughs> Tonight's sponsor, <laughs> Scooby Snacks. Now for the big reveal. There's going to be a new Scooby-Doo movie. And we see exclusive right here, right now. We're announcing it. Matthew Lillard is producing this show. Now, um, the thing that never made sense to me about Scooby-Doo is I never really understood how they figured out who the actual ghost was every time. Uh, they pulled the mask off. Well, yeah, and then they explain to you this long thing about why. They, but it's like, after you pull the mask off, you don't really need to bother. <laughs> it's like, oh, who's, this, who's the dude behind the mask? Okay, we caught him. Take the mask off. No, we don't really need to know his whole big plan. <laughs> we, I, I, think, I think we can, without a shadow of a doubt, say that the person who is dressed up like the monster is the person who is dressed up like the monster. No more explanation needed after that. <laughs> that's, that's fine. Oh yeah, but you see, I saw a fiber at the seat. Yeah, I, I'm sure we're going to get plenty of fibers from the inside of that costume. I think we're good. I think we're good. You can stop explaining, Velma. It's fine. We're yeah, we're we're all gotta, set. Got to keep explaining. You got to keep explaining. Yeah. That's the best part of every mystery. Is just the the detective explaining how they figured out who the killer was. It's like 100%. It's like in every single one. <laughs> now Here's the thing, because um, when I think about that, I think about uh, Murder on the Orient Express. I know that's a bit of a leap, but here we are. And so I thought to myself about, like, ooh, what about if just a, if it's just like a murder mystery? Like, you could do that in an RPG, too. But... Um, then the problem with that is that your characters that people were playing would have to be the murder suspects. So so basically, I guess what I'm saying is the RPG I really want to play is Clue. Oh, yeah? Yes. Clue. And you could have six players, and they would be, uh, what, they'd be Mr. Green... Mrs. White, Professor Plum, Colonel Mustard, Miss Scarlet, and... As long as I can be Tim Curry, that'd be great. <laughs> I mean, just, it, like, can't we all just be Tim Curry at that point? Oh, well, yeah. That'd be great. Can I be the version of Tim Curry that says Spice? I want to yes. be that. Uh... By the way, that's a meme too, Alex. Yeah, Tim Curry is also a meme. <laughs> Nathan, yeah. just in case you weren't aware of that. Yeah. Tim Curry is a meme. Out of curiosity, Alex, is a person's worth directly tied to their meme ability? Sometimes. <laughs> because sometimes I'm... Because the more I think about it, some of the most, the most interesting people are also memes. Nicolas Cage. Meme. Total meme. Keanu Reeves. Meme. Total meme. And breathtaking. A breathtaking meme. Yeah. However, on the other hand, Todd Howard. Also a meme. This is not good. I do not like this. So memes are, are uh, a double-edged sword. I don't know if I like memes. <laughs> I do not like green memes and ham. I do not like them, Sam. I am. There should be memes about memes. Oh, what am I saying? Of course there are memes about Those memes. Those are meta memes, Nathan. Oh, meta memes? <clears throat> I'm going to look up meta memes. I don't even know what this episode is now. <laughs> 
it's the horror episode, Alex. <laughs> and the thing about it is, this is actually, I'm going to reveal it to you now because I'm sure you're going to appreciate it. This was specifically going to be a horror episode for you. <laughs> This yeah. was an episode that was all about making you horrified, and I think I have succeeded. Yeah, I mean, for a minute there, you were broadcasting your Google search, so I was scared. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's scared. I was looking up meta memes. Meta memes. Top text, bottom text. Everyone's scared. Yeah. So we've succeeded. So, yeah. This is meta terror. I understand how meta works now. <laughs> right? That's how meta works. No? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Nathan. Good job. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, we did our obligation of talking about. Uh, things that are scary. I yeah, guess. Yeah, sure. Of course. Uh, why not? Yeah. Totally did. Totally did. Um, obligatory scary episode, spoopy episode in the bag. I think we've, uh, we've succeeded there. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I guess, yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> what is everyone playing? Uh, uh, DC, uh, what are you playing right now? I'm still on Breath of the Wild. I'm in the final Divine Beast that I, you know, in the order I chose to go. So the one in the desert. Oh, good. Oh, good. That's, uh, that's good. I have not gotten a chance to play that because I don't have Switch. But, um... But, yeah. I was talking to Alex earlier, too... Though, because I had seen a thing on what was it, Layman Gaming? They had uh, they had to the thing. They were calling this Breath of the Waifu, but it's a game called Genshin Impact, and yeah. it's very very similar to Breath of the Wild. In the, it like yeah, in, I watched, yeah. How oh, I, I uh, saw some gameplay on it. It looks it looks good. Um. It's a, there, it, there's some variances from Breath of the Wild and things like that, uh, mm. where it, you know clearly draws inspiration from. But uh, there is this neat um, character switching mode, and each character had a different ability. It looked like, oh yeah. So they they were just constantly switching between four characters depending on what they needed at the at in that exact moment, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they just came up real fast too. So uh, that that looks really cool. Yeah. It's a, it's like a gotcha game. So, you know, you have uh, all these characters that you eventually collect, essentially. Um, but, yeah, uh, like, <laughs> the funny thing is, as they're playing the game, they're like, oh, wait, the, just wait for them to do, like, the thing where I, I'm going to, like, be able to glide off. Oh, they actually do have wings. You are gliding. Of course they have that in here. Every time, every time they started thinking, well, you know, next is going to be the cooking mini game. Oh, of course, there's the cooking mini game. <laughs> oh, look, there's a stamina meter when you're climbing up the side of the rocks. Yep. It's all there. And you can actually play it on mobile, but it is available on, like, the Switch, and it's on, um, it's on Windows. And I believe it's free. I believe it's actually a free-to-play game. Which is, is kind of impressive when you see the graphics. <laughs> like, oh, they actually tried with this one. Um, I just recently uh, was like, oh, it's on iOS, and it's also on Android, so I can actually play it on my phone. Just haven't gotten around to doing so yet. But I have it downloaded. So before we talk next time, I probably will have at least tried it out. Uh, I'll tell you how it is, at least on mobile. Um, Alex, what are you playing besides the Fallout 4? <laughs> Uh, besides Fallout 4, mm. uh, I've been playing a game called Interstellar Rift that I recently got. Uh, I'm not very far into it yet, so I'm not quite sure how I feel, but you can build spaceships, and I like that. You can build spaceships? Um, Do you go to different planets in the spaceships? or You can fly around and stuff. Okay. 
kind of. I don't know if you can go on to planets. I haven't, been, I haven't done that yet. Oh, I don't necessarily care about going on to the planets, but I do like the idea of maybe going to Ports of Call and right doing stuff like that um yeah you can go around i haven't figured out navigation completely it's kind of weird so it's kind of like elite dangerous but way smaller or at least in size of the game but... okay okay i only say it because like i don't know if we ever talked about it but there was a, a game series that i liked uh, a long time ago called uh escape velocity and in that one it was like a space trading and uh fighting game where you could, where you started off with like just a little shuttle, and you would just you would could jump to different systems and go to different planets and trade your wares and pick up passengers and uh, fight space pirates and stuff like that. And I just kind of wish that in the modern era they had like tried to do that as a space game instead of trying to do like the No Man's Sky thing and just like. Yeah, you just have spaceships, and then you can get better ones as you get money and go to different planets and trade on them and all the good things. Check check out like oh the ooh, the black market, and then they have parts for your ship on the black market, and it was it was much more ship based rather than like the planet exploration based. Right. More, more most like that. most of them kind of are, I think. Yeah, uh, depending on their size. I know, like, the next thing for Elite Dangerous that they're going to have is they're adding act like you can actually, like, get up and walk around. Oh. Uh, that's something. Which you couldn't, you can't do currently. So oh. it's like, oh, wait, we can actually, like, do things. They're adding a whole first-person aspect to it instead of just the ship aspect to it. Ooh. Mm, that's neat. Um... There was also a game I played, and this is also a fairly old one, but it was called Space Trader, and that was a little bit more like, it, it, it wasn't actually based much on your ship at all, but it was all about these individual ports that you were going to, and you could walk around each one of them, and buy goods on one, and see where they're trading on another, and take certain missions, and you had a certain time frame to see how much you could make and how efficient you could be on your uh, on your your transactions throughout all of that, I thought that was kind of a neat idea. That was also a little bit more insular in its uh, tone of space because when they start to do the open world thing, that's when you have problems. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> nah. Uh oh, hello games. What did you just add to that? Okay. That was a problem with No Man's Sky for me cuz I did play that. Um, but it's it's like so large that I didn't care anymore. Cuz every time you go to a planet it's like, all right, just kind of wandering around. I really would have liked this to be a little bit more compact actually so that I could kind of just wrap my head around doing stuff instead of walking around and wondering if there was stuff to do. <laughs> but, um... Oh, and being able to go on to Derelict's ships. That was also a cool thing in uh, Escape Velocity. You just see, a, like, a disabled ship. Ooh, maybe I can go on there. Okay, well, you have... You have a certain percentage chance of actually, like, you know, are you going to try to capture the ship and put it in your fleet, or are you going to try to just get the fuel or the cargo that it might have, and before the ship explodes, you can try to do those. That was that was neat. Uh, neat little aspects to that game. Um, so, uh, cool. Well, if it's uh, if it's any good, let me know. Uh, Interstellar Rift. Sounds fun. It has Rift in yeah. the title. I mean, it's like fifteen dollars on Steam, so sweet. Like not on sale. It's fifteen dollars, so yeah. Oh, very nice. Um, yeah, I'm all for space games that aren't necessarily the size of space. Give me. Yeah, that. that's. I think I've mentioned it before. That's like my biggest issue with games uh, set in space is that, well, you know. Space is boring between point A and point B. Mm-hmm. Ninety uh, percent of the time. So yeah, that's why games like Mass Effect don't really focus on the um 
the in-between parts. <laughs> they like right. they're like this is the planet. Okay, you're done. We're here. You want to go to the next planet? Okay, you're just gonna go there. <laughs> the Borderlands Three. It's like yeah, there's lots of planets, and you but you you're just going to the parts where there's stuff. <laughs> you're not going to the whole planet. <laughs> Go into the specific areas where there's things happening. Like okay, that that I like that more. I just want to get to the good stuff. Um, I don't I don't remember what I've been playing honestly. Apparently, I was playing Train Sim 2020 for no. Yeah, tell us all about that, Nathan. <sighs> So, you know what's interesting about Train Sim 2020? No, I don't. Um, they make it so damn hard to actually just drive a train. <laughs> like, like you get into the you get into the engineer's seat of Train Sim 2020, and there's so many damn buttons. I do I I was like so amazed by the amount of of like stuff you have to do just to get passengers onto your train and then make the train go forward. <laughs> it's not... It, it really was to the point where I, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm not good at this. Can I just walk out onto the tracks? Turns out, yes, you can. You can walk out onto the tracks in, 20, in trains in 2020. And then... This is fascinating. If you did not see my attempting to play, I found a place near the bridge where it um it clipped me through the what what's supposed to be the playable area and now I'm just on the streets under the bridge <laughs> and I'm just walking through what is essentially supposed to be the facade of the villages and towns and everything. That's outside of the the train area, and you just realize that yeah, you go into the buildings and it's just like an empty shell that's supposed to be a, just a, a wrapped around skin, just like floating through cars. Cars are are half uh, submerged into the street. I'm just I'm just walking through the towns now. In Train Sim 2020, I spent more time walking. Just for the record. They did a very poor job of making it compelling. The start, the start of the thing, because I'm figuring, okay, it's train sim 2020. I'm gonna spend all my time like in a driver in, in in the engineer's seat or something in the train. You're outside the train when you start the game, and they have you walk around and show you that there's like objectives at each port that you like put up these signs and you fix these fences. And I'm like, why is this part of the game? It's Train Sim 2020. Why am I walking around? <laughs> and then they encourage you to get in and to sit in one of the regular passenger seats so you can just ride the train. <laughs> I, I, I'm like, <laughs> holy shit, I am now experiencing a simulation of riding in a goddamn train. <laughs> this is the most boring shit I've ever experienced. You just need to do it in VR. That way you're actually... Oh my god. That would be amazing. Train. At the very end, though, I was like, I literally no longer gave a shit. And I figured out how to make the train go. And I just put my power up to max. And then I left my engineer seat. And I just walked to the back of the train. <laughs> While the train's just going there. While we fly past the first port. I'm way pa I see the little thing on the screen. Your speed is well above what it's supposed to be. I'm like, yeah, all right. I'm just, I'm just going through. And my train derailed. So. <laughs> and then I stopped playing because I was bored. <laughs> I was like, I just want to see if I can die in this game. <laughs> Let's just see if I can die. <laughs> yep. For the record, yep. <laughs> you can. It's hard. They make it real hard. But you, you, you can do it. If you believe in yourself. <laughs> you, can do, you can derail your train. It's not, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not great. It's not great. Um, actually, the thing that I was playing after that, because I was like, I'm, I'm going to try to play an actual game, um, was, uh, 
Uh, I was playing the newer content for Borderlands 3 because I, I haven't played it for a while and the new DLC packs were out. So uh, I ended up playing Bound in Blood, which was very good. And then the one that just came out, which was about uh, Krieg. Uh, because, Alex, you might remember Krieg from uh, Borderlands 2, the Psycho. Mm, sure, a little. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, the, the Psycho character class, his name was Krieg. Uh, the one that you could play. I, I didn't play them. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't. Okay. Oh, that's right. You were the Mecromancer. You you did Mecromancer uh, too. Yes. Yeah. Um, Psycho was the one that uh, actually a lot of people I know played the Psycho. But anyway, the uh the last DLC, well the last known DLC for Borderlands Three, it was about um you go inside Krieg's head. Find to, you go inside the mind of a literal psycho from uh, Borderlands Three, and uh, yeah, that was kind of crazy. Uh, very innovative, but um, yeah, it was it was it was fine. I'm just trying to wrap my head around why there's now ten mayhem levels, <laughs> and uh, and what it actually it's more fun that way. It's more fun that way. Oh, yeah, I'm plus. I'm playing on Mayhem 10. Don't worry. Um, it's not all that bad. It's just that you lose fight for your life is probably the yeah. biggest thing I miss. Because that was always such a good mechanic. And they're basically like, yeah, by the time you get to Mayhem 10, uh, you, you don't have that anymore. You, you die, you instantly respawn back. It's like... Ah, uh, man. I don't know if I like that. But since I'm Moe's, and I've got Iron Bear, Iron Bear dominates at Mayhem 10, because his armor and his weaponry also gain levels based on what Mayhem level you're in. So... So basically, my my like explosive cannons that I use just like do a million damage. <laughs> With each shot at that point. And I have like a million and a half armor for him when you're in Mayhem 10. So by that point, it's like, eh, actually, this isn't so bad for me. I can do this. It's fine. Um, But no, I, I, like, I like Borderlands 3. I did try a few other games, but I'll probably be doing Titanium Mine episodes on those. So, yeah, you still didn't explain exactly what that was. Citanium. Or did you? It was just, uh, you know, internet was not letting you have it. Citanium Mine is a, like, mini podcast series that I've been doing for Delve, and it is uh, basically just me uh, living in a cave, and then people come to visit me so that I can explain to them a game that I was playing. <laughs> What it is and what works and what doesn't work, and basically the ins and outs of it, and whether it was good. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, one thing that I've been doing in each one of those episodes is, if you like this game, here are some other games of that are similar to it that you might think about playing. Um, which which is fun, actually. It's it's fun for me because I was probably going to talk about them anyway, and this way I get to just do them in an actual podcast form, uh, which which makes a little bit more sense. Um, so I, usually it's it's games that I've I've more recently played, but then I like went back and was like, oh yeah, right, I had footage and stuff from like. Uh, what remains of Edith Finch, and I forgot that I never really talked anything about it, and I'd like to be able to take the opportunity to spend a little time discussing it uh, because it was a very good game, um, and uh, about the genre behind like uh, narrative games and that kind of thing. So it gives me a little bit of opportunity to go a little bit more in depth with uh, certain games. Um, so, so that's what Citanium Mine is. In case anyone's wondering, I've done quite a few I mean, episodes I was on wondering. it. Okay. It was like he did you you started doing a thing and posting it, but like didn't talk about it at all. So oh. it was like, huh, what's this? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, worst case scenario, Alex, you could um listen to an episode and 
see what why would i listen to something i don't know what it is um i don't know why yeah. watch a television show yeah. you're you haven't watched before why <laughs> I, I don't watch i don't watch television shows nathan why play so a game happened. that you've never played before I mean, I also don't do that, so that's also. So yes, you do. You had, you hadn't played. Um, you hadn't uh, played any game before you played it. Nope, I played them all before I played them. <laughs> that's how this works. You're Nathan. boring. <laughs> yep, sure am. I only eat things that I've previously eaten too. <laughs> Accurate. Just, you know. I have never eaten bread, therefore I will never eat bread in the future. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair. Fine. Whatever you say. Um, but anyway, I, unlike Alex, uh, do enjoy trying new things. <laughs> so, I, I occasionally do absorb things that I'm not necessarily familiar with. Uh, I, I will watch, uh, Sometimes I'll watch YouTube channels that I'm like, I it just like pops up on recommended and it's like nothing I ever thought I'd have an interest in. <laughs> and I'd be like, huh, I wonder what that is. What was the thing that I just found on YouTube? There's something called lockpicking lawyer. And it's literally. Uh, you just found that? Yeah. I never knew that that was a thing. No. Did you? Cause I, yeah, I, I, I've watched a bunch of it. Yeah, I, I, I was like, oh, wow, this is cool. This is fascinating. It's a hand channel. It's a hand channel. Yeah, it certainly is. You get a lot of, of hand-on-hand action. But I, I think the one that they recommended to me was one of the most recent ones uh, where he was, like, challenged to do this in under, like, three minutes. And he opened it in 30 seconds. <laughs> I was like, wow. I want a lockpicking set now. <laughs> yeah, that's a good skill to have, Nathan. You never know when you're going to need it. You never know when you're going to need, like, you know, deft hands that you can right. utilize. You never know when this is actually going to end up being D&D &D and somebody needs to be the rogue. Yeah. You you yeah. might actually need these skills one day. Who knows? If you're looking to actually learn that, I would check out Modern Rogue as well, if you haven't. Oh, Modern Rogue. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Brian Brushwood, isn't it? Yep. You know what's interesting? Brian Brushwood followed me on Twitter. Uh, He followed me on Twitter as well. Okay, fine. Don't make yeah. me feel special anymore. A while ago. <laughs> yeah, this was a while ago for me too. I don't I had never heard of him before. <laughs> oh yeah, he's he's a magician. And yeah. A YouTuber. Yeah, he is definitely a magician and he has some he has some good tricks up his sleeve. So anyway, yeah, that was uh that was like a YouTube channel that I didn't know about. Um but then again, like a year ago I didn't know who Mark Rober was. Oh, jeez. Mark Rober's fantastic. <laughs> Mark Rober is fantastic. Oh, my God, that devil's toothpaste. Uh, have you seen a lot of his videos? Yes. Because, like, he has some really fun stuff. Oh, yeah. They had the um one that he just did where he surprised that kid, and yeah. it was the... uh the, he, They made that giant bottle with the, <laughs> with the devil's yeah. toothpaste. Yeah, I, I watched it, Nathan. Yeah. yeah, that wasn't okay. a devil's toothpaste. That was the the um, elephant toothpaste. Elephant, elephant. Yeah, the devil's toothpaste was the one that washed the entire side of the building. <laughs> yeah, in color. Uh, yeah, I know he, he was probably most well known recently because he did those glitter bomb packages. Those those definitely yep. had some, but I like the ones where he was like watching the Mars rover that he had worked on oh yeah because he used to work for uh, nasa nasa and jpl yeah yeah he worked for nasa he worked on the so mars he rover. designed that was on the curiosity not the current rover though not the one that's on its way to mars right right yeah. the one that's already there yes the one that's already there 
Um, so, uh, just to ruin your day a little more, Nathan, Brian Brushwood's following me as well. On Twitter. <laughs> Take that. I think, do, do you follow him before that, DC? Yeah. Yeah. He, he was on a lot of uh, tech podcasts I'd listen to. Yeah, oh, is he? Uh, that makes sense. They do a lot with the Modern Rogue in like collaboration with stuff. Um, oh wait, so Alex he's also like he's he's been around doing a lot of things. Hold hold it hold it. So uh, Alex, were you did you follow him before he followed you? I think so. Yeah. Ha! I'm still important. He followed no, me not. first. That's the. Uh... That's not. <laughs> ha! Did he did he say hi to you? Did he message you? No. All right then. Some point. <laughs> <laughs> on the other side, Vsauce too liked one of my comments on their posts on Twitter. So I mean, the... huzzah! The... I don't Pe even really use Twitter anymore, so I don't care. <laughs> I've actually I've actually had a few famous people like tweets that I say. Which I I'm always surprised Crazy. by. I, I'm I'm always I, I'm I'm always I puts a little smile on my face. It's like oh, person, person actually saw a thing I said. <laughs> That's nice and liked it. It's fun. That's the best part about social media is actually like interacting with people that you know that you like that uh, are able to interact back. It doesn't happen very often, <laughs> but when <laughs> it does, it is very nice. Um, all right, terrific. So we're all playing stuff, and uh, that's great. And this is a spooky time of year, and I don't know if anyone is going to be going out. Probably not. And uh, I don't know what you'd want to wear. Maybe you'll just uh, dress up in a costume uh, at home. I I probably won't. I'm yeah. going. Yeah, I think it's not scary. I don't know what I could wear that would be uh, scary. A mask. We already went over this. You're going to be a plague doctor. I'm going to be a plague doctor. That's right. I got to order that from Amazon today. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna order my plague doctor mask <laughs> for Halloween. <laughs> got to get that out there. Terrific. Um, any other uh, Halloween wishes we'd like to send out to people for the spookiest time of the year? Uh, eat all the candy corn you can find. Well, I mean, don't eat all the candy corn you can find. Cause... All of it. Yeah. Um... All at once. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't think that's good advice, Alex. <laughs> Just it. I don't know what you're talking about. It's you the really... best advice you can give someone. No, I really don't. I don't feel like that's... Um, I feel like there's a lot of medical professionals that are going to to uh, have it have an issue with that assertion. Candy medical corn is... Can, candy don't corn you know doesn't... that we don't trust medical professionals in 2020? <laughs> candy... <laughs> Also, probably it's America. Candy corn might actually be considered a vegetable. <laughs> I don't know. Um, a vegetable. You can have a whole turkey dinner and candy corn. There you go. That's... I like. Oh my god! I post a link to it in chat. Oh my! I see this now, and that's. <sighs> <laughs> you broke James. You, know what? <laughs> you, broke, you broke James. <laughs> Why? Why is Look, it, it includes all the traditional Thanksgiving favorites from roasted turkey, green beans, oh and stuffing to ginger glazed carrots, no. cranberry sauce, and sweet potato pie. Oh are they Perfect. all the same candy corn, or are they different candy corns that taste different? Or did they like just like take all those flavors, try to mesh them together into each mm. candy corn? You know, you apparently know, they're different flavors because because flavors include green beans, oh. roasted turkey, cranberry sauce, 
ginger glazed carrot, sweet potato pie, and stuffing. I may have to buy it just to try it. Just God damn it. <laughs> Alex, here's what I say to you. If you do that, record it. Because <laughs> I need to see this with my own two eyes. Record me eating them? Record you eating and reviewing no, I'll, each I'll buy, one. I'll buy two, Nathan. I'll, I'll get one for you, too. Okay. If I can find it, I, 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 would, I would be the person that would record trying each one of them and see, and reviewing how I feel about each one. It's a, the new, the new uh, podcast we're doing is food reviews. It, yeah. Available at Walgreens. Hey, there you go. <laughs> oh, God, no. No. Oh, God, no. Nathan's excited. <sighs> okay, so how fast can I get to a Walgreens? Uh, this hour, <laughs> like 45 minutes for you. <laughs> no, actually, there's Walgreens right in Osby. Is there? Yep. It's where the, um, CVS? No, it's where the Rite Aid used to be. So... Yep, I can I can go I can go there now and get myself a turkey dinner candy corn. <laughs> Not going to. Next available time I happen to be a, by a Walgreens. <laughs> I will go look into this Brock's. Um yeah. And then we can do um the <laughs> the um Oh god, what would I call that series? The thrifty connoisseur, or the junk food connoisseur, <laughs> candy connoisseur. Oh my God! Why didn't I think of that first? <laughs> <laughs> candy connoisseur, just just rating rating candies. Why is it just gotta be candy, Nathan? I don't know. Limiting yourself already. <laughs> Yeah, but isn't that the thing you have to be specific about what you're doing? You would, you would call it the tasteless taste test. Oh, damn it! That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you don't. I hate tasteless taste test. Tasteless taste test. Tasteless taste test. I'm putting it there so I don't forget it later. Triple T. T3. <laughs> <laughs> the T3 podcast? The T3 podcast. It's like H3H3. H3, it's it's like T3, T3. T3. <laughs> <laughs> the T3 podcast. Better than the movie. Better than the movie. <laughs> <laughs> T three, the Mighty Ducks. No, wait, no, that's not. <laughs> no, that's not the one. T three, the Train Deluxe. <laughs> the, the might, the Mighty Trucks. Yeah, yes. I was saying that, but you played Train Simulator, so. The yeah, yeah, that's true. Train. Totally train time. T three. Thomas the Tank. <laughs> trains, trains, and more trains. You know what's fascinating is that in Train Sim 2020, no Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> you can get, you can get Thomas. No, you can't. That out out of all oh, the know. train packs, I didn't see a single Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> you know where you can get Thomas the Tank Engine though? In Skyrim. In Skyrim. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, fascinating thing about Train Sim 2020. Um, if you were to buy all the add-on packs for Train Sim 2020, it would cost you over six hundred dollars. Oh, oh no, that's Train Simulator. Train oh, Simulator. Sorry. It will cost you ten thousand dollars for all the train packs. Wait, what? What? Where are the two games now? Train uh, Simulator and. Uh, there Train Simulator and then Train Sim 2020. Train Sim. 2020. Train Sim. Okay. Yeah, you you can easily get confused on these two. Yes. Yeah, essentially, Train Sim 2020 is the poor man's train simulator. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't need... Is that what it was called? 
Um, well, okay. Train Simulator goes up to 2021 now. Oh. oh. Train Sim World. Now you're going to spend another, another $10,000 on train stuff. Yeah. Train Train Sim World is the one I played. That's the one. Train Sim World 2020. TSW, as they call it in, like, the train sim community. Uh, did you join the community? Is that what happens? No, I didn't. I'm not, I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid for this one, Alex. Are you kidding me? I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, I think you should. No. I think you should definitely... I did oh, realize, that, though, that, you know what would be... Uh, shot a frag mine and this dead body just flew at me. That's yeah, crazy. that will happen in in Fallout. <laughs> uh, does not happen in Train Sim World, for the record. I, um... Yeah, you're too busy walking from place to place. <laughs> I did think to myself it would be, like, if I actually, you know, didn't have anything better to do. It would be a fascinating challenge to see if you could just play Train Sim World by walking <laughs> without ever being in the train. <laughs> but it also seems like the most boring thing you could ever do. What? No. No. I mean, you could probably find something more boring, but I don't want to know what that is. <laughs> to be honest with you. People like these games. I don't understand why. Yeah, train people like these games. <laughs> you know, the funny part is they're spending about as much money on the game as they would be spending on, like, a train set. Oh, yeah. Or just riding trains. I because mean, they probably spend less riding. Oh, yeah. Do you know how much you... You could get, like, a, like a sleeper car on, like, the Orient Express going, like, the whole... Or the Siberian Railroad, like, going the entire route for the cost of the DLC. Yeah. I just found a dead merchant, and now I got all their stuff. Now, see, that does happen in Dream Sim World. You find dead merchants? All the time. Sounds good to me. No, actually, once you get past the uh, playable area, like, you just get out in the scenery, there's no people at all. I was like, maybe all the people are just riding trains, <laughs> and there's, and out because out here it's some dystopia where <laughs> there's just literally nobody. There are some cars and some buses that will drive through you, but that's about. They'll drive it. through you. Uh, yeah, because there's nothing actual, like they're just skins wrapped around a invisible block, basically. So that sounds weird out of context it it does sound weird out of context uh i didn't want a train driving into me that also sounds weird out of context so anyway if you want uh dead merchant action i guess play fallout 4 if you want no merchant action play tra train sim world 2020 <laughs> Because nobody's out there. All right. Well, this has been an episode. This has been an episode or two. This has been an episode. And it was spooky because uh, we said it was. Yep. Sure yeah, was. Yeah, that's how this works. Yeah. Thank you to everyone who joined us on this episode. Thank you to James who had things that he needed to go, and he got grabbed by the ghoulies, and we wish him the best with the ghoulies. Maybe he'll maybe he'll do a dance with them later. We don't dance know. The ghoulies. the ghoulies could dance. Dances with ghoulies. Dances with ghoulies, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the three-hour epic. Dances with werewolves. <laughs> um, why was that never a movie? Dances with werewolves would have been amazing. It'd be like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. But with werewolves. Thank you to DC for coming by and humoring us again. So. Thanks. Thanks. Yay. Yeah. 
And um, thanks to uh, Fallout 4. Thank you, Fallout 4. For, for entertaining me? For entertaining Alex while we're um, here. Thanks to the mod community for being so dedicated. <laughs> um, that's That's actually a serious shout-out. Thanks to the mod community. You make games better for literally no money. So well, they they make money too. You can support them. You can support them, but there's no inherent money involved. Like you don't really pay for the mods. You can you can give them some money, but the, like they're they're not able to like sell the mods. Maybe Bethesda ends up think, selling them for you. I don't think you, Nathan but... knows how these work. <laughs> Sometimes. I know how things work. Oh. Alright then. I mean, did you did you pay for any of the mods? No, but they can have monetary <laughs> gain on their websites so you get them if you choose to do that. Right. But what I'm saying is it's not like a, a like a game where you put money down and then you get the thing. Like there there aren't there aren't really like mods for Skyrim and 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 Fallout and stuff where the modder says, for five dollars you can have my mod. Well, that's what the creation club is for. <laughs> so Bethesda can monetize it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Good. Good times. Uh, Good so, time. so thank you to all the modders out there. We appreciate what you do, and um, and uh, thank you for the makers of Train Sim World for um, making me never want to actually become a train engineer. That was a career path that I can, you know, just check off my list of potential futures. Uh, always good to know. Always good to know. Uh, okay, everybody have a lovely Halloween. Don't eat too much candy. Um Except for the turkey dinner candy corn. Except for the turkey dinner candy corn, because that's part of a balanced diet. Uh, and uh, we will see you on the next episode, um, where I guess we're we're probably going to be talking more about uh, other turkey, turkey candy. Turkey dinner candy corn. Candy. Because <laughs> it'll be th for our Thanksgiving episode. Man, we, yeah, this this, but it's the it's the gift that keeps on giving it. <laughs> um, this is great. Hopefully by that point, maybe we will have tried them and we can relay <laughs> what we thought of them. So, hey. I can tell you how good they are. Something, something to look forward to on the next episode is our review of Turkey Dinner Candy Corn. Stay tuned, folks. <laughs> it's coming. I don't right. know if they've been warned or if they've been... Yeah, this will actually cause less people to come <laughs> No one will want this now. Okay. Anyway, thank you for joining us. We will see you on the next episode. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Nathan <laughs> runs away from the candy. Running away from the candy corn. Ah!